78 years, the home to the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Ohio Stadium packed with 94,000 tonight. Script Ohio for only the fourth time in the twilight. The fourth night game in the history of this facility about to square off the Buckeyes and the Bruins. That's the matchup tonight, the Pac-10 and the Big Ten. The Bruins come in 1-0 and and rank 13th, 14th ranked Ohio State off to an 0-1 start. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Columbus. We expect a great game tonight. And, of course, Ohio State fans expect more than what they saw two weeks ago. The kickoff classic owned by the Hurricanes of Miami. An unimpressive performance by Ohio State. Meanwhile, UCLA won their opener, but that was Boise State, with all due respect to Boise State. So both teams, I think Gary Danielson, have some questions as to just what they have and especially at the quarterback position. This time a year ago, these teams were thinking national championship. Maybe these two clubs can think that this year, but there were known commodities under center last year. You know, Brad, and I think that's really the charm and the beauty of the college football game. When you have a chance to win the national championship, you go for it. And last year, these two schools, these two great powers went for it, and they did it with senior quarterbacks. They took almost all the snaps. Cade McNown for UCLA, Joe Germain for Ohio State. You know, you can't get a guy ready when you're trying to make a run for the national championship. We will see four quarterbacks tonight. And of course, both teams want to win. But more importantly, or just as important, they want to find a quarterback for the rest of the season. That's right. We've seen nine quarterbacks over two weeks. We'll see four more tonight. Both teams searching with a conference season just around the corner. Here come the Buckeyes. And the Bruins will be coming out next. Our kickoff in a moment. It's Ohio. Hello, everyone. I'm Lynn Swan. There are several UCLA Bruins that found out that everything blue is not golden. 11 players were suspended for being in improper possession of a handicapped parking permit. They were suspended for two games, one player for the entire season. As you can see by that graphic, three of them were defensive backs. What that means is it's going to be double duty for some offensive players. Number 26, Deshaun Foster, he is going to have to play in third down situations at the safety position. And number three, Freddie Mitchell, starting wide receiver, well, he is going to line up at the corner position, third long, third, and anything over eight, nine, or ten. Now, they're very athletic. They have a great deal of skill and talent, but Brad, what they obviously lack is experience in the secondary. No doubt about that. They will not be Deion Sanders back there. No, Brad. And you know, if you look at UCLA's opening game against Boise State, that's an easy game that may come back to haunt UCLA because maybe if that game was a little tougher, mm -hmm. those guys would have only gotten a one-game suspension. I think I there's no way UCLA just game. put them out if for two, one run. game knowing that Ohio State was game number two. Well, you have to appreciate, I guess, the guts of a coach like Bob Toledo to say, hey, it's two weeks, guys. You saw his record. In his fourth year at UCLA, John Cooper, with the exception of Joe Paterno, the dean of Big Ten coaches, and actually in terms of how many years he's been in the Big Ten, he has more years than Joe Pott. Twelve seasons, never started 0-2. The last time the Buckeyes began a season, 0-2 was 13 years ago, 1986. And they have won 20 straight home openers. UCLA won the toss, and they will take the football first. This place has been buzzing all day long in anticipation of only the fourth night game in the history of Ohio Stadium. And maybe more of the buzz is about can they come back and look better than they did against Miami? Well, I don't think they can look any worse in John Cooper's mind. Right. I mean, he thought they were flat. They didn't run the ball. They gave up a seven-minute drive late in that football game. I think John Cooper would be shocked if Ohio State played another flat game like that, especially here in the shoe. That's Freddie Mitchell. He is one dangerous return man. Jermaine Lewis goes back to join him. Interestingly, again, UCLA wins the toss and does not have the confidence in their defense. They start out on offense. Great point. We don't see that much, do we? Dan Stoltz has got it teed up. This is the seventh meeting. The eighth meeting, rather, between these two clubs. Each have won three. There's been one tie, and we're underway for the tiebreaker tonight. Freddie Mitchell, four yards deep in the corner, decides to bring it. And cartwheels out to the 15-yard line. Nice hit on special teams. Matt Wilhelm got down there to make the hit. Our Chili starting lineup. The biggins up front, Worley, Phelan, Danoff, Safer, and Brian Polak, their most 
dependable tackle. Melsby and Freddie Mitchell, the wideouts. Brian Fletcher starts tonight at tight end. And in the backfield, Drew Bennett, Drew Bennett, who struggled against Boise State, especially in the first half. Deshaun Foster and Matt Stanley, who's a Columbus native, in there at fullback. They'll work from their own 14-yard line. Off the right side, a little bit of room out near the 19 for Deshaun Foster. Nate Clements made the stop defensively. And here is the defensive front four. Bailey Pickett Collins making his first start, and Brent Johnson, who was their defensive lineman of the year last season. The linebacking core, a Butkus candidate, an All-American candidate, and Diggs, Ott, and Bullard is back from a one-game suspension. In the secondary, they lost some great players. They still have some great ones. Plummer and Clements on the corners. Barry and Nicky are the safeties. Second down, a short five. And Bennett completes it out for a first down across the 25-yard line. And that's got to be a good start for him as he zips it out there to Melsby and give himself a little bit of confidence. Well, anything could be better than a week ago for Drew Bennett. He himself admitted that he was a bit nervous, a bit frustrated with his throwing, and he knows he can breathe. Corey Paws right behind him. We had an outstanding football game. There's Corey. He will play. Interestingly, when we talked to Bob Toledo and Al Borges, they have two scripts. One script of starting plays for Drew Bennett, and then another script ready for Corey Paws later in this first quarter. They are very different quarterbacks, and we'll develop that as we go. Fletcher, the tight end in motion. Play action. The bootleg and the toss is out to Fletcher. Nice move to get across the 30 out to the 33 yard line. Fletcher had a beautiful catch against Boise State where he laid out near the goal line last week. He has improved week in and week out and just has taken the job at least momentarily from Gabe Creshaw. Well, some, although both were in in that uh, situation. You're, you're right, Brad. You know, sometimes you get mesmerized by the great receivers and wideout receivers for UCLA. But last week, the tight ends for UCLA caught five balls, 105 yards, and two touchdowns. So this offense uses the whole field and all the weapons. Second down and two from the 33. And Bennett comes up tossing it again. Fires almost intercepted. And now picked up by UCLA. And it's Matt Stanley down the sideline. The Columbus, Ohio natives got a touchdown. 67 yards off a deflected pass. And the fullback takes it all the way to the end zone. Have you ever seen a walk-on or a fullback run like that? He was running away from Gary Berry, the free safety for Ohio State, one of the fastest players in that second game. He told his dad this week, I'm going to have to bite my tongue so I don't sing the Ohio State fight song in this stadium. He grew up watching games here. He has shocked the crowd from 67 yards out. And remember, he's only playing because Darrell Price was one of the suspended players right. for the first two games of the year. Huge play off a twice deflected football. You know, I know Bob Toledo likes trick plays, but I don't think he scripted that one. I don't think so either. Extra point is up and good. Griffith knocks it through, and the crowd is stunned. All right, take a look. Pretty innocent pass, a pass that could have been picked up. Drew Bennett goes from saying, oh my gosh, to go for a touchdown. What a first play. Bennett, three for three on that drive, including the touchdown pass to his fullback. Well, John Cooper's got to be wondering right now. You know, they had the Hail Mary pass at the end of the first half that Miami converts into a touchdown. That's They're just not used to that happening here in Buckeye Line. Touchdowns like that. Here's a kick. Kenyon Rambo waits for it at the five-yard line. Rambo almost broke out of the pack, got across the 25 out to the 28. All right, Brad, one more look just to prove you this ball did not hit the ground. First of all, it was Percy King, number 17, that says, I got a touchdown. No. Then Ahmad Plummer comes up. I got it. No. Then it hits Freddie Mitchell right on the back. Doesn't hit the ground. There it is right there. See, right in the middle. Fullback says, I'll take it. And now this is the amazing part of it, Brad. He just outruns the secondary, and that means a free safety, Gary Berry, number one, doesn't catch him. All the way to the end zone, Drew Bennett. You think he's not a happy quarterback? 7-0 <laughs> Bruins. Ohio State works from its own 28-yard line. Here's a pitch to Wiley. Wiley out to the 31-yard line. 
Let's take a look at the Chile starting lineups for Ohio State. The biggins up front, Walter, Gurr, Murphy, Gilbert, and Henry Fleming, who the coaches say probably had the best game against Miami. Germany and Rambo with the wideouts. Wisniewski is a huge target at tight end. And in the backfield, at quarterback, Austin Mockerman, Michael Wiley, you just saw carry that, and Matt Keller is the offensive captain at fullback. Second down, a short seven. Mockerman comes up throwing, and he's got his first completion. Reggie Germany, first down and out of bounds. Defensively for UCLA, they change coordinators, and with it comes a 4-3 defense. Williams, Holland, Coker, and Coleman up front. The linebacking core, some substitutions in that linebacking core and secondary due to the suspension. Sonny Hall is starting tonight, Stansberry and Piper. And in the secondary, Hunter and Bell on the corners. Williams gets to start after his touchdown on an interception last year, uh, last week rather. And Strykula, who is the captain of the defense tonight, a former walk-on, who's making his second start. Wiley, knocked down, nice defensive play. Sonny Hall, who came up there to make the hit, and a yard loss. Sonny Hall did not play a week ago, came up to, to, to make the play on that stop. And, of course, this is a maligned UCLA defense a year ago, finished 99th in the country. A change has been made at defensive coordinator. Bob Field, a longtime assistant. Terry, Terry Donahue's assistant for 14 years as defensive coordinator, is back in charge this year. Second down, all of 10. Draw play to Riley. Big opener off the left side. He's out across midfield. He's got a first down at the 48 of UCLA. Jason Bell made the tackle. You know, Michael Wiley, Brad, was so frustrated a week ago against the University of Miami. This is the hit chart, the run track for Michael Wiley. Not much happened. One big play right up the gut for 69 yards. But look at right else. Left, right, middle, not much there. This is a guy who comes into this game, and John Cooper and everybody understand they got to get the tailback position off and running. They fake it to him, and Mockerman fires out complete. Inside the 40, Kenyon Rambo. Makes a nice catch. I think he's got a first down in front of Joe Hunter on the corner. Rambo's been talking all week about not getting the football. Same with Germany. You can't blame the wideouts. They just didn't see it against Miami. That's right. You know, you talk about two guys. I mean, they have to fill some big shoes that was left here. David Boston was really the center of this offense a year ago. D. Miller was his counterpart. This year, Reggie Germany and Kenyon Rambo are going to be the two guys, the go-to guys. And Kenyon says, go to. I only got two. Got to go to. <laughs> Well, they're going to go to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage, because they say bobbled it, and the replay showed it. Didn't quite hold it. Fans don't like the call. This is one that, uh, if we were in the NFL, we could try to waste a timeout on this and uh, look at it. You're right. I don't think we need to waste one. It looked like he was bobbling it to me. So it brings up second down and 10 at the 48. Flags down. This throw is complete to Germany at about the 42-yard line. But again, a penalty marker on the play. David Wittenvoet is our referee. And the penalty is going to go against UCLA. Bob Toledo says, I want to know who it's on, and I want to know what it was. Well, Bob Toledo, remember a couple years ago, we were down in Texas when Bob Toledo brought, brought a beleaguered team, a team that didn't think they had much chance against penalty. Texas. The down remains second. And he had a pretty good ball game, scoring mm -hmm. 66 points. I think when you have the type of offense UCLA has, the type of receivers, the type of firepower, you know, it doesn't really scare you coming into a team to play anybody. I mean, you feel you can move the ball against anyone. Well, they put so many points up last year, 40 a game, 476 was just one point off the school record, which was the previous year right. with Cade Minow. Second and five from the 43. So it's going to bring up second down and five at the 43-yard line. Wisniewski, the big tight end, comes over on a shift to the left side. Now Rambo in motion. Wiley on a counter. Not much there. Nice job defensively by Ken Coker. That four-man front of UCLA could change the way that this defense looks after giving up all those yards and all those points last year. Well, the goal for the UCLA defense, I think, is first of all, let's just line up right. 
I mean, if we could just find out where we're going to line up, know where the ball is, play a little bit more zone defense, keep everybody looking at the football, and then let's just have some fundamental tackling. Let's try to not, not get too many knockout blows. Let's just tackle somebody first. They might have an improved defense. There's that ranking we talked about. Gave up 25 points and a ton of yardage every game. Third down, Mockerman under a blitz. Throws behind Germany. And the blitz from Marcus Reese made him throw that one off target. So Ohio State's drive stalls. Marcus Reese is playing because Ryan Neese, one of their impact linebackers, cannot play. Austin Mockerman started out pretty accurate in this football game a week ago against, or two weeks ago against Miami. He was kind of hassled all game by that front rush. And John Cooper said, we got to get that offensive line to help our quarterbacks. And again, pressure on the quarterback on a three-step drop. Stoltz doing double duty as the kicker and punter. Freddie Mitchell calls for the fair catch and hopes it makes the end zone. It's not going to get there. Nice job by Kevin Hauser down there on the special teams, and there's a happy punter. The UCLA, a 40-yard punt buried down at their three-yard line when we come back. At Burger King, we're always trying to make Have It Your Way better. Like this idea for a win-your-way college football game. Two more tries! Run back a kickoff and win great prizes. <laughs> then we thought, why not just scratch and win? This week, Penn State and Miami face off, and you could win a million bucks, a Toyota RAV4, or the best tasting prize of all. And 22 remaining first quarter. UCLA scored on a long touchdown pass the first time they had it. They started at their 14 yard line on that drive. This time it's going to be worse down inside the three after a nice punt coverage by UCLA. So far, Drew Bennett would take this kind of night. If he stopped right now, he'd be two under, right? <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> you got to play all 18 holes. That's the problem. Yeah, there's a lot of course left. <laughs> First down. Foster straight up the middle. Deshaun Foster is going to be close to a first down. Gary Berry, the safety, made the tackle. Let's check our Dell Game Solutions, Gary, for UCLA. Well, I think if you're going to try to find a quarterback, the only way they're going to do it is use both of their running backs. Jermaine Lewis and Sean Foster have to emerge in this game. It'll be too tough on the young quarterbacks. And secondly, for UCLA, if they're going to stop Ohio State, they don't need eight in the box, nine in the box, ten in the box. They need all 11 guys playing run, and then those defensive backs, what I think is going to be the story of the game, have to be smart enough to see the play action pass and get back and play the pass. Easier said than done. Need all 11. Not like Notre Dame today when they had 12, 13, and 14 <laughs> on the field. Worse, didn't they? <laughs> We're going the wrong way with numbers. So you saw how much they have to go to get a first down. This might be a spot where they could try something deep because they've only got about two inches to go for a first down. Bob Toledo is not against trick plays or trying to go for the home run ball. He's a very exciting offensive coach who hopes that his defense will improve this year. Here they come to a second down in inches. They're just inside the 13 yard line. Straight up the middle. I think they might have lost a yard. Ohio State uh, and a penalty marker comes down from the secondary. Nate Clements and Brian Poley Dixon were jawing a little bit. Yeah, Nate Clements, I think, is going to get 15 yards on this one. Poley Dixon was blocking him, and Clements threw a late punch and got caught, I believe. Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. They offset. Third down. Well, they both got a punch in, I guess. Like kissing your sister, right? That, that, didn't, that doesn't <laughs> unless you, mean anything. Unless you got a really good-looking sister. That's right. Here we come. Coming off the line of scrimmage. It was a play away. Really nothing. No reason to, for either one of these guys to be in the middle of the action. You see Poley Dixon blocking. Oh, well, you see it. Clemens got in the left first, and Poley Dixon did slap him back. So, good call. More punches there than most heavyweight fights we watch. Trying to cut it outside to Sean Foster in his second effort, I think, got it for him. Jason Ott and Cortland Bullard made the stop. 
But Foster the sensational freshman of a year ago now a sophomore picks up the first down. You know I think the beauty of the UCLA attack Brad again is they have three wide receivers. I mean if you're talking wide receivers in the state of Ohio right now both the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals would like to have the three guys that UCLA has in uh, the three targets and UCLA uses all three plus the tight ends a very difficult team to defense. Danny Farmer seeing his first action flags down may have been motion on Blake Worley over there at left tackle. That's the way Ohio State is pointing. Danny Farmer did not play in that opener against Boise State. Here's the call prior to the snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. The down remains first. Danny Farmer is a top receiver for UCLA. He has a high ankle sprain on the left ankle, but he is going to still be an impact player in this game if he can still go up in the air. We'll get back to this story a little bit later, Brad. Looked like straight ahead Swanee in the warm-ups. He looked pretty good. Cutting is going to be his problem more than likely. Short gain, swarming defense. Ott and Queen in there to make the hit. problem because the left ankle and cutting to his left I think is more of a problem for him. He has a specially designed custom made cast on that left ankle that's going to help him to some degree. But I, where I think he still can have an impact is in a jump ball situation and UCLA does this by design not just by happenstance. Well, he's got the 6 4 for him with Paulie Dixon at 6 5. Farmer's school record almost 1300 yards receiving last year. Here's Deshaun Foster and the ball squirts out but he was out of bounds. And now the running is getting tough against this Ohio State defense that last year was number one in the country against the rush. You know, if you, you look at this Ohio State defense, they pride themselves in stopping the run. That's why I think they were shocked a week ago, the way Miami, two weeks ago, excuse me, the way Miami drove that ball in the fourth quarter with a seven minute drive. I think that was the biggest shock of that football game to Ohio State. Ohio State's got their nickel defense in. Three wideouts for Bennett from the shotgun. Rolling, and now he's going to keep it. He's got a long ways to go. Took a big hit from Plummer and Barry. And I think he got the first down. Needed, needed 11. Looks like he got it. Drew Bennett might be the best athlete of any quarterback, you know, in the Pac-10, and that's saying a lot because we've seen some good ones. This guy's a point guard in basketball. He's got great speed. Remember, he even was a wide receiver for Cade McNown a year ago. Took a wicked hit from those two guys in the secondary. I mean, he got the first down at the 24-yard line. Just over eight minutes remaining first quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Lynn Swan. And our ABC crew with you in Columbus, Ohio. The Pac-10 against the Big Ten, and right now the Bruins have things going their way. They want to keep it going that way, and they're going to call a timeout. So Bennett will head over to talk to Bob Toledo. We'll take a timeout with the Bruins in front by a score. Conquer the second. fourth night game in Ohio Stadium history. And it is a gorgeous night for football. Just under eight minutes to go. First quarter, the Bruins on a long touchdown pass. Lead by seven. With Gary Danielson and Lynn Swan. I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us. On a perfect night for football in Ohio. First down for the Bruins. Deshaun Foster. And he's got Bullard draped all over him. Got away. Given ground to try to gain ground. Oh, didn't work. Man. Nate Clements from the secondary. A huge loss back to the six yard line. <laughs> it looked like something was going to develop yeah. there for a minute. You know, the shot Foster, I think, ran out of gas on that play. He started going one direction, and when he came back, he throws off Bullard in a nice play and then thought he had an angle to get back. Then Nate Clemens just explodes into the frame. I mean, that's one guy going at like 16 bit, and the other guy going 32 bit <laughs> speed right there. <laughs> He's got a more powerful uh, computer right there, doesn't he's, he? He's got to take out his bit and let Jermaine Lewis <laughs> take over for a play. You look behind Jermaine, who's right near his own goal line. Second and 26, and it's an empty backfield for the Brewers. Here comes a blitz. Quick throw over the middle. And out across the 20 to the 21 goes Gabe Cretion, the tight end, to pick up a 14. 
ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevy Tracker. It gets around. Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. Chili's, the proud sponsor of ABC College Football and National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Third Looking in from atop Ohio Stadium, Bud One Airship flying over Columbus tonight, providing our beautiful shots. Budweiser reminding you that fresh beer tastes better. I think there was a couple of those consumed in the tailgating all afternoon here in Columbus. Third and 12. Screen, Foster the intended receiver, and Ohio State blew that up. I think that call is a direct call that Drew Bennett isn't ready to throw third and long in his own end zone. I mean, you wouldn't see Cade McNown throwing a screen in third and long like that. That's a coach saying, let's punt the ball, it's seven to nothing, and let's just take it from here. Let's not make a huge mistake early in the game. No need to get crazy. Right. Big to punt, a true freshman, and Nate Clements is on the other end. The guy who made the great play that forced the long yardage situation. And Deshaun Foster a long time to get that punt off. He almost had it blocked. And Clements has to just clear out, and this thing's going to end up with a great UCLA bounce all the way down to the 23-yard line. Ends up being a 55-yard punt. Ohio State trailing by a touchdown with 6.03 remaining first quarter. Eyes work from their own 23-yard line, first down. Keller and Wiley in the eye set behind Mockerman. Both wideouts to the near side. It's Wiley off the right side, slips through across the 25, out to about the 28. And we're going to slip out to New York and John Saunders. John? Brad, it's the Win Your Way Burger King update. Florida State against Georgia Tech. Florida State up 7-0 after a Peter Warwick touchdown. Joe Hamilton, though, finds Des White, and White takes off. Off to the races, 80 yards for the touchdown on the next possession. You see the flag. It was against Florida State, so it is now 7-7. Brad, back to you. Battle for supremacy there in the ACC. Here is Big Ten, Pac-10, and a completion out to Kenyon Rambo. Out near the 35-yard line, Jason Bell, the corner, made the hit. Pickup of about six. Austin Mockerman looking over to the sideline. We expect to see both quarterbacks tonight. You know, it was shocking about Ohio State last week, and this is why John Cooper was so upset. 15 times Ohio State got the ball. 11 times they went four plays or less, and they had three turnovers on first, and that's shocking for Ohio State football. That's how you blow a game. Absolutely. First down at the 35. Mockerman play action. Zips it out. He's got Keller down the sideline. And the captain fullback into UCL to A territory at the 42-yard line. You know, Keller is more than a captain and a fullback, Brady. I think he's one of the most valuable players on this football team. You got to get the ball to him. He can receive. He can block. He just does a lot of great things. And he's done it for four years. And he's, he's got bigger, too, hasn't yes, he? Yes, he has. <laughs> Play action pass to slip him out. Very simple. You can see the game plan emerging this time for Austin Mockerman. A little more wide open than last week. Wiley now up the middle. Oof, he was tested, and Pete Holland, speaking of captains, the captain of the defense, said hello right at the line of scrimmage. 444 left in the quarter. Let's check the Dell game solutions for Ohio State and John Cooper. Well, this is what I thought. I thought they had to use the receivers to establish the run. You know, this is in 1960 and 1970 Ohio State football. This is the 90s. And then the other one is they got to make UCLA make first downs, not touchdowns. And already UCLA has had the big play. And, you know, more big plays like that will be tough for Ohio State to get back in the football game and win it big. And they have already given up a 67 yarder, as Gary said. Here's Markerman off the roll, trying to go right back to the same guy, Keller, and this time that couldn't handle it. And it will bring up third down and a long nine. Markerman, a California native, one of many, four or five on the Ohio State team, and none of them really said UCLA was ever in their plans. They were USC fans. Niall Diggs is another one. Markerman said USC would have been the school out there he would have gone to had he stayed in California. I got to tell you, there are some great players on this team. Niall Diggs, 
Kenyon Rambo, Michael Wiley, Austin Mockerman, all came out of California, Brad. The guy <laughs> who recruited them, Tim Spencer, who is the Ohio State Buckeye running back. He has been very valuable to this team in that way. Boy, Spencer looks like he could still play. Third down, blitz coming. Nice pressure on Mockerman. They drill him as he lets go. It's Marcus Reese again, the fullback. Yeah. Who said hello? And it was Ricky Manning on the other end who broke it up. You know, Marcus Reese again. That's a three quick, quick drop for UCLA to put that kind of pressure on Ohio State. I know that offensive line right now is going to be upset with the way they're playing. They cannot have that kind of pressure on a quick passing game. It's the same thing that happened against Miami too. Absolutely. Mockerman said, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody, <laughs> but I really didn't have a great chance. He said that my offensive line would be the first to admit they didn't play very well. That's. Uh, the diplomatic way to put it if you're a quarterback. Galtz to punt. Last time he dropped it down there and his coverage group got it at the three. This time he got a little too much on it. Goes in the end zone. And it'll be UCLA starting offensively from their 20. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern. ABC brings your regional coverage of college football. These same Buckeyes will take on the Bobcats, their rivals from in-state here in Ohio. Kansas, Colorado, NC State, Florida State, San Diego State, and USC. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Call your cable operator, direct TV, or dish network for all the games on pay-per-view. And don't forget, you can get post-game analysis each week from John Saunders online. The Bowl Championship Series is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. 4.02 to go in the first quarter. And UCLA takes over. This is decent starting field position for them, considering how they've had it so far tonight. And if they have one of those deep balls, you know, eight men block, throw it deep, you might see it pretty soon here. Flags all over the place. The Buckeyes were showing blitz, and I think the offensive line of UCLA got happy feet. Penalties on the offense tonight. Bob Toledo. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. The down remains first. No, it's first and 15. They immediately put themselves in that long yardage situation they had the last time they had the ball. Yeah, a couple of self inflicted wounds by UCLA has kept their offense kind of in these long yardage situations. UCLA had only three penalties all of last week, but that was Boise State. Yeah, and then these aren't Boise. These are all men here <laughs> for Ohio State. You know, one of the things that we talked about is UCLA has to run the ball. And the reason they have to run the ball is so they can use the misdirection play. This is Miami against Ohio State. There's Gary Berry, the free safety. Now watch what a good running game can do. It can produce big plays. Here's a misdirection play action pass game. Whoop. There's the free safety. They're going the wrong direction like two subway trains, <laughs> and that produces a big play. And that's why you see Bob Toledo and Al Borges continue to run the ball early in this game. Here's the give to Freddie Mitchell on an end around, and he got collared, and a yeah. penalty marker goes down. Rodney Bailey, unless he got face mask, I guess that's what the call is going to be. That's going to be the big one, Stop too. Made by 94. <laughs> All 15 yards of it, an automatic first down. Was going to be a great play by the 6'4 junior out of Cleveland, but he got part of the face mask or all of the face mask of Freddie Mitchell. Boy, did he ever. Yep. He did. He, Freddie Mitchell. Woo. Neck doesn't go that way. Well, we all remember which way his leg went a year ago. We're yep. happy it didn't go that way again with his neck because that, that was that's one time you want a loose helmet. Mm. Bob Toledo comes over as if to say, Freddie, you all right? He nodded yes, but he's out this play, but it's a first down. On the penalty out to the 30 yard line. Jermaine Lewis back in there at the tailback spot. He's alternated with Deshaun Foster throughout this first quarter. Nice play fake by Bennett. Got pressure, got it down the middle, and got his tight end. Out across the 45, Gabe Cretion. Gary Berry brings him down, but not it before. It's a 17-yard pickup. Gary, this is what you talked about, how well the tight ends played last week in their opener. And, and this is the misdirection, because you can run the ball a little bit. You can throw to the tight ends. You know, if there is a underutilized position in college football, it's the tight end. We saw a few years ago Michigan ride this all the way to a national championship. UCLA, UCLA does it. When you get very active linebackers like Ohio State has wanting to make tackles, those guys are going to be open. Out to the 47. First down. Bennett changing the play up. Lewis will shift to the tail of the eye. A little bit of option from Bennett. The pitch to Jermaine Lewis. Got the corner. Nice stiff arm by the little guy. And he's out of bounds with another first down UCLA. Oh, 
Jermaine Lewis played so well in relief of Deshaun Foster last week. Yeah, I, I thought he really, really spirited the team on last week. I mean, he, he was the guy that really caught this team with a spark. He and Corey Paws, and nice, as you said, Brad, that was an audible, and that's a coaching staff getting a quarterback ready for a look. He got the look and audible exactly to the play they wanted on that play. Didn't quite get the first down marker. He's inches shy, so it's second and short. There's Danny Farmer up here, bump and run. Farmer in motion. Here's the draw play inside. And this looks like it's going to be close again for Jermaine. Well, I had one all dialed for a deep play right there. Yes, you Second did. and inches, you know. <laughs> I thought for sure we were going to get it. Let's see where they spot this one. Might have to take a look again. So you might have lost yardage the way they're spotting the football. And now an official timeout. They will bring the chains in with 229 remaining in the first quarter. As they bring it from the far side. Nope. That much left. Length of the football short. And a third down situation coming up. Speaking of situations, Tuesday, September 21st, Heather Locklear joins the cast of Spin City. Plus Yankee pitcher Roger Clements guest stars on the season premiere, Spin City, 21st of September, right here on ABC. That'll give Michael J. Fox Jeez, some Michael, headaches. Michael J.'s gone from Justine Bateman to <laughs> Heather Locklear. That's not bad work. <laughs> That's a good schedule. That yeah, is. That's a real good schedule. <laughs> Once in a while, you might need a buy in there. Right. Third down and inches. Just outside the 43. He's got a man to man look to the outside. Going to go, well, he fell oh, down. He's going to run a quarterback sneak. Maybe a bad exchange, and Bennett takes a knee. I think they lost yardage here. I think you're right. I think he did bobble the snap. That's two plays, two short yardage plays. Get nothing for it. They did. They lost yardage. I don't even think they have to measure this one. Fourth down at about a yard and a half. Well, what do you do here? You didn't make it on second and, and a half yard. You didn't make it on third and inches. Now you got fourth and a yard. You don't have Chris Saylor anymore as your kicker. Exactly. Not going to try a long one, so here you go. Fourth and, down. And remember, you have four new starters on that UCLA offensive line. Holy Dixon and Farmer left and right as the wideouts. Ohio State showing blitz. Straight ahead, the fullback, and Stanley might have it. Going to be very close. And it is a first down. They won't even look at it. So Stanley came up with a big play earlier on the touchdown reception, and he comes up with a big play here on fourth and one. Well, this is a lot of guts, and I think this is Bob Toledo telling his team that not only are we going to do it this time, we're going to do this all year. I'm going to have faith in you. We're going to establish that we can make these first downs. Help Brad. What a minute 50 to go. And if you're UCLA and you look at Ohio State scoreboard or an oppo opponent's scoreboard, you see a zero. Last time that happened, the scoreboard was broke. <laughs> That's true. I mean, gee. Bad bulbs. Exactly. Inside the 43, Bennett pumps once and now gets it out to Stanley. Broke a tackle, puts his head down, gets inside the 40. You don't think this guy's fired up? He lived six years here and went to Bexley High School. And as Gary said, he's taken the spot of Darrell Price. But his family lived here a long time. But while his heart was here and going to Buckeye games, his parents were UCLA people, and he went out there as a walk-on. And as I said earlier, told his dad this week, Dad, I just hope I don't start singing the Ohio State <laughs> fight song when I walk into the stadium. Well, he has splashed on the scene of this stadium with the two biggest plays for the Bruin offense so far tonight. Three wideouts, Farmer, Melsby, and Mitchell in there. It's Freddie Mitchell in motion, gets it on the end around. Throw back to the quarterback. Bennett wide open inside the 30. Drew Bennett, a cutback, got hammered at the 21 yard line, but there's the first trick play of the night for UCLA. You got a receiver that likes to throw, you got a quarterback that likes to catch, and you got a defense that likes to pursue. That's a good design play. Don't you think? I mean, that's well designed right here. Freddie Mitchell, remember they ran a reverse off this kind of a sprint out when they got the face mask, so the play was set up very nicely early in this drive with the 15-yard face mask penalty. They run the same formation, same play, only this time they throw back. A well-conceived and well-designed trick play. First down at the 21. Again, a little bit of option. Here's the pitch to Foster. And Deshaun is run out of bounds. 
at about the 16 yard line. When you think about Freddie Mitchell and you think about that little pass that he just threw, you have to think back to last year. Not only did he throw one early in the season against Texas, but in the Rose Bowl, very much the same play, going deep, connecting out there with Price, the fullback who dives to the end zone, part of two touchdown passes last year by Freddie, so he can do it all. You know, Brandon, I think that just goes with the theme that UCLA uses. If you talk to Al Borges, he says, we must force Ohio State to defend everybody, and that's what he's done with his game plan so far. The 11th play of the Bruin drive, throwing it right down the middle, kind of a dangerous spot, but it's caught there. And short of the first down is Brian Fletcher, the tight end. About a yard or two, in fact, short of the first. As the first quarter winds down, there's Al Borges, the offensive coordinator. Between he and Bob Toledo, it's like a couple of masterminds on offense. And they really know? have. And you can see how well and how quickly they throw the ball. And they have different launch sites. The quarterback never throws it from the same spot twice. Very difficult to sack these quarterbacks. Remember, last year, Cade McNown was only sacked 10 times in 11 games. We know Drew Bennett won't get sacked on this play because the quarter has come to a close. And a good first quarter for the Bruins visiting a hostile Ohio Stadium. They leave. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back at the Horseshoe, Ohio Stadium, where the Buckeyes trail by a touchdown, and now their defense trying to get the crowd in it because UCLA's <laughs> penetrated down to the 13-yard line. The third down and two, 12th play of the Bruin drive as we start the second quarter. Two tight end set. Deshaun Foster, the single setback. It's option time again. Foster brought down. Great play by Gary Berry. Brad, Gary Berry made the tackle, but Mike Collins made the play, the defensive end slash tackle, whatever they call him nowadays. Inside, he beats his block. Watch him inside. That was supposed to be a block defensive lineman. It forced the pitch early, and someone that the quarterback was trying to account for, Gary Berry right there, was able to easily clean up that option play. Nothing Bennett could have done on that play. A missed assignment in the offensive line. Chris Griffith. In to try 35 yard field goal. He was one for one in the season opener. Kick on the way, and Griffith is added to the Bruin lead from 35 yards away. UCLA trying to pull a shocker on the road against the Buckeyes of Ohio State and doing a good job. 14 13 till halftime, it's 10 0. A 62 yard scoring drive that time. Directed by Drew Bennett, who was three for three on the drive, as a matter of fact. They got a 35 yard field goal from Chris Griffith, and they lead 10 0. Freddie Mitchell had a completion yeah, in that series, too, and they're working on his lower left leg. You know, Brad, I know Ohio State and, and Mike Jacobs and John Cooper is trying to protect some inexperienced quarterbacks, but Ohio State needs to open up this game plan. Yeah. This, I, as I said, this isn't 1970 football anymore. People will stack the line of scrimmage. Even UCLA is going to stop it. A real simple offense, and that's what the Buckeyes are running right now. Dixie's kick goes five yards deep, and Kenyon Rambo brings it out. Took a shot from his own man before he got to the 20-yard line. Ball loose, still Ohio State ball. They trail by 10 as we check in with John Saunders in New York. Right, Georgia Tech and Florida State knotted at seven apiece. Chris Wanky back to pass. You want to talk about a great story? That's Dan Kendra with a touchdown catch. The former quarterback who had to move the fullback after many injuries. Great story. 14-7 right now, Brad. Kendra probably wanted to bench press that goal post <laughs> when he got in the end zone. Good for him. Good to see him back. Yep. Martin and Combs now in the backfield for Ohio State as they change things up. And out to about the 23-yard line. Austin Mockerman at the controls at quarterback. And this was his conversation with his coach, quarterback coach Tim Salem, on the previous possession. Okay. Okay. Yep. Oh, now you look like you're pretty comfortable out there. Know what's going on, right? Yep. Feeling good. And make sure when the ball is uh, 
You know, you know, it was nice there, Brad. Uh, Tim Salem did two things. First of all, he gave his quarterback some information. Right. What's happening out there? And then he knew that Austin Mockerman was a little bit, you know, had anxiety a week ago against Miami. Threw a little confidence to him. You're looking good out there. Yep, he tried to settle him down. Now, that's what a coach has to do, especially a quarterback coach. You don't want to get caught up in the anxiety and all the big game hoopla. You want to talk to your quarterback and understand what he needs. Tim Saylor's done a nice job of understanding what his quarterback needed in that little conversation. Man. And to That's his, his right left, right, him. exactly. The offensive coordinator, Mike Jacobs. So those two working in unison as we've got a timeout on the field. Ohio State struggling in that first game. They only had 220 yards of total offense against Miami and only 104 through the air. So they're off to a much better start tonight than they had been in that kickoff classic. And they've been chomping at the bit now for two weeks to get back to play a football game. And yet they find themselves now in a 10 point hole not exactly what they were hoping for. Ken. Well we see you know we've been seeing a lot of quarterbacks we've been hearing uh, the story of quarterbacks everywhere so let, let's throw it open you know everybody wants to talk quarterbacks cross talk time with Gary. Yeah but I mean let's not let us do all the talk we want to hear what you guys say right I mean there's there's some things going on in college football right now so we want to hear what you think right we're going to come back with the question of the week of the day and fire up those computers there is the second quarterback for Ohio State second down and six play action for Mockerman going deep down the middle Keller is fullback is in the clear and Matt Keller on the UCLA side of the 50 at the 29 yard line well, I think that's exactly what's happened on the Ohio State bench. Go to your go-to guys, which is Keller, and let's open up the offense. Let's quit throwing these quick outs. Let's quit trying to protect our quarterbacks. Let's go downfield. This time a little play action pass. Slip your fullback right by those aggressive linebackers who've been saying, let's stop the run, stop the run. And that's a very simple play, but a little deeper play that Ohio State can start to open up that defense and expose that defense for the Bruins. Well, the guy that holds the fullback record for receptions, Matt Keller's got the two biggest plays of the night for Ohio State. Two catches already, 56 for his career, and they try to throw the quick out to Kenyon Rambo, and that one's incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10. So, Crosstalk time with Gary. Yep. Here's your question. All right, here it is. Now, what would you rather have? If you were the coach now, you have to understand, would you rather have two quarterback system, like maybe Arizona mm -hmm. with Smith and Jenkins, or would you rather have the clear-cut starter and, and then kind of a marginal backup? Now, i got to be careful because I used to be a backup. You know, <laughs> kind of a guy you don't want in there. Might, maybe like a Drew B Breeze type guy, and if you lose him, you're in a little trouble. You can answer that. BCS online at ESPN.com. That's how you get involved to talk back to Gary. His kids probably want to jump in there and talk <laughs> back at him. They don't get a chance at home. It's second down and 10. Ohio State goes right back to the same play. And Kenyon Rambo might have a first down. It looks like he could be a little bit short. Trying to stretch out to that marker. Well, here's the, some of the two quarterback systems around the country, and there are a lot of them right now, Brad. And uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's going to continue to emerge because usually what happens is someone ends up being the guy. Here's the two guys at Penn State, Thompson and Casey. Thompson had a little better game. Looks like Drew Henson is starting to emerge at Michigan. Eric Crouch, he can play anywhere. Yeah, he played three <laughs> touchdowns today in three different positions. And then we saw Ortiz Jenkins, I think, was it Friday night or Sunday night, come off the bench and basically beat TCU. I mean, yep. that was a good two-quarterback system right there. Penalty marker on the play as Michael Wiley takes it for what would be a first down, but penalty markers on the play. Well, all this two-quarterback situation, what do you think? What do I think? Yeah. You know, I, you know what? I, I think I'm in favor of it as soon as they go to a two-coach system. <laughs> I'm knew. all for it. I knew there'd be an answer <laughs> like that. I shouldn't have gotten myself involved. Prior to the snap, illegal contact by the defense. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Three first down, courtesy of the UCLA defense. I don't get it. They're paying all these coaches a million dollars a year now. They can't figure out who to play a quarterback. Pick a guy. <laughs> Well, in both cases tonight, we've only seen the guy that started. And yet they have told us that we'll see them both, both coaches. Mockerman, 50% for his 76 yards. Wiley's had kind of a quiet night, but I said the two big plays have come from Matt Keller, the fullback. 
Wiley trying the middle. Uh, there's not much there. No, you're, you're right. And that not much there means that offensive line for Ohio State is not pushing around the defensive line for UCLA. And that, that's got to be a, a, a scene of joy for the UCLA to be able to stop it. I mean, because you know, this is a team, the last two games, it, it just was decimated by two running attacks at Miami and Wisconsin. In fact, they gave up 1,200 yards of offense almost in those two games that Gary talked about. We've got 1246 remaining in the half. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Lynn Swan with you from Ohio Stadium. And a 10-0 UCLA lead, and Mockerman wants to talk it over on the sideline. Ohio State will call a timeout. 12-18 till the half, 10-0 Bruins. Why do I have Aflac and Hi guys, snap it. Time for this week's Aflac trivia question. When was the only time Ohio State and UCLA met in the Rose Bowl, and which team won? When did they meet, and who won? We'll be back with the answer in a few minutes. Not a Rose Bowl here, but a John Cooper Buckeye team looking for its first win of the season and trying not to snap a streak of 20 straight victories in home openers. They trail by 10. Mockerman, play action, wants to go deep. Does for Rambo, broken up. The last instant, Ricky Manning, the true freshman who was brilliant in that game against Boise State, and he looks like he's really going to be a player, Gary. Yeah, and, and, he, and he batted it down with his glove hand. And what I mean, he's a center fielder for the Minnesota Twins in the summer. He's a free, right now he's playing corner against one of the fastest guys that ever played for Ohio State, Rambo. Look at him read that ball, and it's one of those things that I don't care if you're a 15 years old, the 10th grader, if you know how to play defense and you can find the ball and judge the ball, it's an unteachable skill, and they say Manning has it. Out of Fresno, 5'9", 170. Can really motor and make plays like that already as a freshman. Going to have to hurry to get this playoff. They just do. Mockerman from the shotgun. Under pressure. Throws on the run. Got it to Wiley. Nice little sidestep inside the 20. Down to the 19, maybe the 18-yard line. And that's a first down, Buckeyes. Dragging Wiley out of there. Deshaun Foster playing defense. This was Austin Mockerman's best play of the football game. He's had the long throw to Keller over the middle in this drive, but this play just sensing the pressure, being able to step up in the market. Nobody blocks Coleman this time, comes up and then keeps his eyes up to make the play to find Wiley over the middle. That's the type of play a young quarterback absolutely has to have to feel that confidence, and he doesn't have to have Tim Salem tell him to get confident anymore. He can just be confident. And as Lynn Swan told you when we opened up the show, Deshaun Foster would play back there in the secondary, and he got a piece of Wiley and wanted a piece more of him after the play. Mockerman, he's going to keep this one. And slides with some help at about the 16-yard line. Coming up tomorrow night on ESPN, this should be fun. Guess who's back? The Cleveland Browns against Cordell Stewart and the Pittsburgh Steelers. ESPN Sunday Night Football Live, 8.15 Eastern. Then on Monday night, Trying for a three-peat, Terrell Davis and the world champion Denver Broncos against the Miami Dolphins at Mile High. You talk about two quarterbacks and comparing a couple. <laughs> one guy's got 59,000 yards, and one's got two yards. Brian Greasy starts for the Broncos in the great one, Dan Marino, for the Dolphins. Wiley breaks into another first down and goal at the four-yard line for Ohio State. Stansberry and Strykula like kept him out of the end zone. Yeah. Brad and Gary, I've been watching Michael Wiley for about three years now, and I like him as a football player. One of the things he has learned to do tremendously well is how to run hard inside. He goes inside, he breaks tackles, he's looking to take people on, and he'll go after the tough yards. Something he could not have done when he was a freshman playing a wide receiver, something he could not have done last year because he was learning how to be a running back, but this year he comes into the season a knowledgeable, mature running back, able to get the tough yards inside. Well, he was all Big Ten last year with over 1,200 yards on the ground. He got some tough ones, as Swanee said there, and he brings up a first and goal at the three-yard line. And Wiley in there at the tailback spot gets the pitch, heading to the corner. Wiley, touchdown. The Buckeyes' first score at home this season. Wiley from three yards away. 
A lot of things have changed, and we've talked about what's changed the passing attack, but there are some staples here at Ohio State, and the toss sweep, it's always been here, and they still can block it well. They did that time, and Wiley found the end zone. Stoltz in for the point after. Steve Balasari, the backup quarterback to hold. The Buckeyes march down and get right back in the football game. An 81-yard march, in fact, this was the 10th play. Wiley got him close, and then Wiley got him in the end zone. Wiley from three yards out, his first touchdown on the ground this year for the Buckeyes, and it's 10-7. Jermaine Lewis waiting on Stoltz kickoff. Freddie Mitchell's back there with him. This will be Freddie from two yards deep. Got collared at the 15-yard line. Grant almost took his head off. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. Brad, if Georgia Tech had managed to keep Joe Hamilton healthy for the last few games against Florida State, they might have had a win. Here's Joe Hamilton again, 19 yards, six carries for 34 yards. He's also thrown for 139 and a touchdown. It's tied at 14, Brad. All right, John, they got to keep little Joe in there. That's yeah. what they haven't been able to do for three years. You're right, he's quite a player. And he stays healthy. They make his go. Now, what do you do if you're the UCLA? You switch quarterbacks. Drew Bennett's been hot. They're going to come in with Corey Paws. Paws gets the call from just outside his own 15. Spin inside. What Jermaine Lewis does best is look like a pinball in there to pick up four yards. One more look at the touchdown, Brad. Couple things here. Here's Kevin Hauser. He blocks Santi Hall. And then watch Chris Jackson, a scraping linebacker, not quite get there. I want to point this out because Chris Jackson wouldn't be playing if Tony White, their starter, or Robert Thomas hadn't been suspended. I did not see any quickness from Chris Jackson. He might not be ready to play. That's where that suspension shows up. Second down and six, pause. Throws on the run, completes it out to Stanley again, the fullback. And Matt's got it out for what looks like a first down. Well, Corey Paws, if he has some strengths, it might be leadership. He had a great game last week and accuracy. That's what Bob Toledo told us. He has a great accuracy passer. Well, he got off to a good start when Drew Bennett didn't last week. He ended up 12 out of 18, 128 yards. There you see Drew on the sideline. Paws got five series in that game last week. Drew Bennett had eight. He's a little more fiery leader, like a right-handed Cade McNown, if you will. He almost is the mirror image of Cade McNown. Here's a toss. Nice play defensively by Nate Clements, and he's made a couple good ones tonight. He broke that thing up. A loss of a yard. Comes up limping just a bit. They just keep coming up with corners yeah. that not only play man-to-man -man coverage here at Ohio State, but stop the run. Now, when that keeps happening, I know it's recruiting. I mean, Ohio State's got some great recruits, but you don't play at Ohio State in the secondary if you're just a fancy cover guy. You got to come up and make tackles because look at the schedule. Wisconsin's coming. Yep. Michigan's coming. And so is Penn State. You have to be able to tackle. Well, they had Antoine Winfield, the Thorpe Award winner last year. Ron Springs and the list, like Gary said, seems to go on forever. Here's a pass. Pause. Overshot that one. And Gary Berry almost intercepted it. Pass intended for Randy Hakes, the tight end. Might be a little first pass uh, or second pass in this case jitters. I don't know, but that one was high and long. A little bit of a misread by Corey Paws. He thought he had a blitz, but you know who's been quiet in this game so far is Niall Dix. Mm -hmm. I mean, UCLA has kept him off balance by moving the ball all over the field and not the typical offense that a Niall Dix can make an impact. I think the way they could get Freddie Puggage, the defense coordinator, can get him into it is blitz him. Let's bring him. And he's on the corner right now. There he is. Let's see if they start to bring him. Pause from the shotgun. Danny Farmer hasn't touched the football yet tonight. Here's a throw over the head of Jermaine Lewis out of the backfield. Covered by Jason Ott, the linebacker. So pause comes in, got his paws on the ball. That's about all he did. See, that's just a tough thing to me about a two quarterback system. I, I just think it's very difficult to stand around all that time. You know, sometimes when you're the two quarterback system and you're the second guy, you press to impress. Right. You know, I mean, you, you just try to make plays and you try to throw the ball a little harder. You try to make plays outside of the offense. And that's why I just think. Hey, you've had all spring, all summer, all fall, pick a guy. Fixie, the true freshman, took a long time to get his first punt off, but it did roll 55 yards for him. 
just got this one away as well. And a diving catch by Nate Clements at the 40 yard line. Dixie was in three time zones difference right there. <laughs> He's better be careful. This is Eastern time. There you see Al Borges talking with his number two quarterback, Ohio State, trailing by three when we come back. The UCLA. We want to talk about two quarterback systems. Here comes quarterback number two for Ohio State, Steve Belisari, in at the controls. The give. Derek Combs had a penalty marker down as he lost a half yard. Joey Strykula came up in the secondary to make the hit. Well, I thought Kenyon Coleman, number 99, got held on that play at the end line of the scrimmage. Face mask. Got a face mask on the play. Against UCLA. There's Steve Balasari, and if the name rings a bell, his brother Greg, an excellent linebacker here. And six plays at quarterback, but he had. Problem with a center exchange and also had a bad lateral, really, so he didn't have a great outing against Miami. He had a fumbled snap, a bad lateral, and one pass for minus three yards. He must be a pretty good player because he's still in there, right? <laughs> he's a heck of an athlete exactly. and a great, strong safety and special teams player well, of the year last year. Yeah, but we talked to the coaches and they were adamant that he is not moving, he's a quarterback. Right. So I'm going to believe that for the rest of 1999 at least. I thought you were going to say the rest of the night. <laughs> here's here's uh, Pete Holland who appeared to have jumped offside. And this could give Ohio State a quick 10 yards and a free first down both by penalty. Let's see. Holland a mainstay inside. Prior to the snap illegal contact defense the five yard penalty results in a first down. Right at midfield first down Ohio State. Ohio State, they don't have their running game going or their passing game. They got the penalty game going right now. It's kind of their third offense. That's right? the sixth penalty <laughs> on the Bruins. And inside, they try to run with Combs, and there's just not much there. UCLA's defense has been good on the inside rushes tonight. Second down and long coming up after we tell you ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. And Budweiser made with the freshest all natural ingredients for the brewery fresh taste. And live above Ohio Stadium tonight is Bud One Airship, aerial ambassador of the King of Ears. No Clydesdales up there, baby. That's all <laughs> air. Second down and nine. Belisari, his first throw, completes it. Kenyon Rambo out of bounds at about the 46 yard line, short game. Well, you can see Ohio State is consciously trying to get the ball to Kenyon Rambo. But they're doing it with very safe classes, trying to throw the quick outs and trying to still protect the quarterback. You know, Brad, last year, Ohio State, admittedly, they had David Boston and Joe Germain, but this was an offense that the wide receivers averaged 12 receptions and 196 yards a game. That's the difference in why this offense is struggling early in the year right now. Yeah, but keep in mind that offense for Ohio State doesn't mean featuring a wide receiver. They want to do everything balanced, so they don't have anything in particular in mind to get these guys the ball, Gary. Well, they try it here and pull it down. Reggie Germany to the seventh. That just upped the wide receiver's average a little bit. We thought the jump ball play was going to favor UCLA in this football game. The first jump ball on the fade is to Germany versus Jason Bell. Jason Bell is decent size. 5'11", 6 foot. Pretty decent coverage on the play, but Germany goes up, got those gray gloves on, grabs it, and does it just the way Lynn Swan was showing him. Right, Lenny? <laughs> <laughs> in my dreams. <laughs> first and goal. Now it's Combs. Bangs his way down to the two yard line. Pick up of five. Stansbury made the tackle, but for the first time tonight, Ohio State threatening to take the lead in this ball game. With just over seven minutes remaining in the half. Belisari, two for two, 42 yards, including 38 on that one to Reggie Germany. Like I say, they must like Belisari a lot for him to still be in this competition. He has an air about him that the coaches love. He's back to throw to the corner. Rambo, touchdown. <laughs> 
So Belisari comes in and lights up the crowd at the scoreboard. Ohio State in front. Very interesting matchup that Ohio State took advantage of there. That was the strong safety matched up Jason Stevens on a wide receiver. That's a mismatch. That was probably an audible or a check with me type play in Ohio State. Got an easy touchdown because of it. Stalks in for the point after, has it up and good of the Buckeyes. Their second touchdown of the night gives them the lead. Rambo slipped on his cut trying to come back to that ball. I thought his foot was almost out of bounds before he made the catch. Well, the ball got there a little late, but you're right. His right foot was in, and I think his right foot is the one the official saw, and I think correctly makes the call. The ball is caught, right foot's in, and then his left foot goes out of bounds. Nice look at it right there. Good job, guys. That gives us the look we needed. In fact, here's a, another one. He's in right there, and then the foot slips out. See, UCLA, Brad, went big. They brought in extra linebackers and just kept their strong safety and took out both of their corners, and that's why Ohio State probably saw that on film and had a check with me play to take advantage of a strong safety on Rambo. That's a complete mismatch. Everybody happy on that offensive series. Germany got the long ball, yeah, Rambo got the touchdown, and Belisari was perfect. See, that's the way you got to do it. It's not like it was 20 years ago where guys just run through walls. Stoltz to kick. Freddie Mitchell, five yards deep, will take a knee. Freddie Smart. And we'll take it to New York and John Saunders. John. Brad, number two Penn State struggled today, and number one Florida State having the same problems. And Joe Hamilton, a big reason why, hits Kelly Campbell across the middle. He goes 56 yards for the touchdown, and the game is tied once again. Every time Florida State takes the lead, Georgia Tech has the answer. Brad, back to you. What a great one going on in the ACC, and they forget about Kelly Campbell over there, who was a true freshman last year because Des White's so dangerous on the other side. Here, Ohio State in a good one, leading UCLA 14 10. 646 till halftime, and it's Paws who comes out at quarterback again for the Bruins. Play action. Corey loads it and fires Danny Farmer. First catch of the year, and out to the 29 yard line. You know, Lynn talked about Farmer being an impact in this football game. If he is, this UCLA offense going goes from being a great offense to a lethal offense. He's just, I think, the best receiver right now. He and Peter Warwick in college football, and I think he's going to be a great professional football player. And when he gets healthy, you're going to see all the things he does to get stats like that. Well, he picked up nine yards there. Needs less than 100 to be the all-time receiving yardage leader in UCLA history and Deshaun Foster's got the first down farmers got that brace on his left ankle so the Bruins answer with a first down out to the 31 yard line Geithner's checked in there at the fullback spot now with Foster the tailback Paws looking at a possible blitz. Going deep, Freddie Mitchell overshot everybody. Ahmed Plummer back there defensively. And Mike Collins got a piece of pause. Mike making his first start at defensive tackle. A guy as a true freshman who played a lot of football last year, and his first start came tonight. You know, Ohio State's defensive line really goes about 10 deep. Joe Brown, Ryan Pickett. Mike Collins, Clinton Wayne, even Heath Queen is a guy that's going to, going to play tonight. That's five defensive tackles, and they play about three or four defensive ends. That's why that defensive line can continue to pressure the quarterback like Corey Paws got right there. Two tight end set. Here comes pressure again. Diggs gets Paws, and down he goes. Niall Diggs, as Gary said, had been quiet all night. He just got loud on Corey Paws. And they did it by blitzing him. When you have a great player and they're running away from him, run him to the ball. It's, it's pretty simple. This isn't chess, this is checkers. Bring him to the ball. He's a great player. He wants to get in the action. Zoom. A little bit of a block that time inside 
I think it was Deshaun Foster did not judge the speed of Niall, Niall Diggs. This guy is a playmaker as good as you'll see in college football. A lot of people compare him to like a Lamar Arrington who had some huge plays for Penn State today. UCLA needs a huge play. It's third and 17. Pump fake by Paws. Going deep down the sideline. Freddie Mitchell didn't make the adjustment that he was looking for. And he's nowhere near that pass. Mitchell had almost broken his route off. Paws went deep with it. And it's time to punt for the Bruins. A young quarterback always has to be aware of the free safety when you're throwing the ball deep. The quarterback is responsible for this guy. If you don't get him out of the throw, you have problems. And this time, Gary Berry was right there to make a play. Fixie has taken a long time getting off his punts. Let's see if the special teams have made an adjustment on that. Nope, they got the return on, and he gets away a nice kick. Clements backpedals to the 29. Nate looking for some help, got a couple of blocks, broke a tackle, and out across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Coming up tomorrow on ABC Sports, one of golf's greats, Tom Watson. He's on the senior tour now, believe it or not, made his debut in first-round action, and he's right in the hunt. Final round coverage starts at 3 Eastern tomorrow. Mike McCullough right now is 13 under, Gil Morgan 12, and then Tom Watson at nine under. So join us for golf tomorrow on ABC. I got about seven more years at that 50 thing and I'll be in that senior tour. Yeah, tomorrow. I know. I like how you and Swanee <laughs> keep getting younger and I keep getting older. Happy belated birthday, by the way, to my partner Gary Danielson, who is moo yesterday. <laughs> you lie better I'm than anybody I've ever tour. seen. I'm not on the senior Only tour. Billy White Shoes Johnson can <laughs> lie better than you about their age. Here's Wiley. And Wiley out to the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. A little mixing it up there on the sideline. That's not a place you want to be, Jason Stevens, if you're going to start talking a little bit right in front of all those Buckeyes. Well, I'm surprised to see as, as much of Jason Stevens as we are. I thought Julius Williams, who had the touchdown uh, a week ago, we'd see more of him in this game. And so far, we've been seeing Stevens. Yep. Williams had the interception, a 53-yard touchdown return, and did start in the ball game tonight. Six-yard pickup, a second down and four for Ohio State. As we approach four and a half minutes, first half. Wiley blasts off the left side. Michael Wiley, first down, Ohio State. Down inside the 44-yard line. So the Buckeyes spotted UCLA 10 points. They have come back with touchdowns from Wiley. And then Kenyon Rambo, and it has lit up Ohio Stadium tonight, only the fourth time ever playing a night game in this facility. Brad Nessler, Gary Daniels, and Lynn Swan with you as we've seen the Buckeyes come from 10 down to lead by four, courtesy of an 81-yard drive capped off by Wiley. And then it was Kenyon Rambo on the short touchdown reception. This time, nothing doing for Riley. Lost a yard or two. This is what we talked about, our game summary so far. Drew Bennett, look at this deflection, and then look at Matt Stanley, the Columbus, Ohio fullback, who takes it 67 yards to put UCLA in front. They added a field goal to go up 10-0, but then Wiley caps an 81-yard march from three yards out as he got the corner. And then Belisari, three for three on a drive, capped by Kenyon Rambo in the end zone. That's where we stand. 14 unanswered by five points. Belisari sets, fires. Germany's got it. Inside the 35, that one was right on the money. Well, that was a real nice pitch and catch there. That's that a long throw. That there. was a long throw, and it was a throw for a left-hander kind of across his body that time. Reggie Germany, watch, it's a semi-roll. You have to reset your feet and then let it go. Germany goes up and gets it at its highest point and then gets that left foot down just in time. Perfect execution, and Belisari says, well, I've been giving out a lot of hits. I guess I can take one for a completion. Ken Coker gave him a shot there. With the loss of yardage on that first play, though, by Wiley, it still brings up third down and two. Straight ahead, the fullback's got the first down. And Jamar Martin, looking like Pete Johnson or somebody, blasts <laughs> off that left side for the first down. Jamar's not a little guy. 245, 250. He's got legs you wouldn't believe. And he's got the first down. See, I, I think this is what you might see happening for this UCLA team is they'll begin to wear down. We talked about the depth that Ohio State had in the defensive line. Well, UCLA does not have that type of depth. 
There's Fletcher. He's a true sophomore. Coker, you've been mentioning. Pete Holland, that's about as deep as they go yep. across that line in the middle, and they're going to get worn down by the big Buckeye line. Belisari pump fakes, wants to go deep down the sideline. Germany is out there, and he overshot him. And Action. took a cameraman out with him on the near sideline, incomplete. Wonderful coverage that time by Joe Hunter, number 22. Another freshman playing in the secondary. He's playing for Ryan Rock, who's suspended in the game, and he did a great job. UCLA hanging tough with all those players out. 11, as Swanee talked about. Seven would have been starters or major contributors to this football game. So Bob Toledo made that decision in the summer. Has stuck by it. And his team trying to stick in this game, trailing by four. You got to think they're going to go back to Drew Bennett the next time they get the football. Well, you? yeah, you, you wonder. I mean, that's the tough thing. You keep second guessing yourself, and then pretty soon your team starts second guessing you. You know we do. I mean, that's, that goes with the territory. <laughs> Wiley on the toss. Got two or three. Stansbury and Coleman made the tackle as we check in with John in New York. Brad, you like high scoring seesaw type games? Got one for you. Florida State against Georgia Tech. Chris Wenke dumps it off to Jeff Cheney. And a terrific run out of a couple of tackles surrounded stays on his feet gets it to the end zone 29 yards of cover 28 to 21 now Florida State back on top Brad. All right John Ted Roof the new defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech's going to be in somebody's shorts over the tackling right. on that play. He's going to have to get uh, that thing re-roofed he's going to have to put shingles <laughs> up he plays not very much longer. <laughs> That's Anthony Fletcher being dragged off, and we talked about UCLA being thin up front just anyway. Got thinner. He just got thinner. You're right. You know, and that, that's what it's the tough part. You know, UCLA, they, they hang in there for a while. Now Ohio State is starting to establish the wide receivers. The running game will fold in very quickly. Third down at eight. It'll be Belisari from the shotgun. Yeah, watch the quarterback running here. Here he goes. Needs eight, though. Broke a tackle. Dives. Got eight. And more. That's what he can give you. Yeah, and the reason, he's like a Michael Bishop-type athlete at quarterback. Not just an option football player, but a dimension from that shotgun, very much like Michael Bishop did for Kansas State. And you'll see more and more plays put into the offense by Ohio State to take advantage of what this guy can do. Especially if he wins the starting job, well, then you can bet you're going to see more and more of it. I, I, keep, I keep telling you, he's playing for a reason. Believe me, partner. Yep, okay. I do. If you don't go one for three for minus three and, and play the next game if they don't like you. First down at the 17. Both wide outs to the top of your screen. It's the fullback. Martin inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Marcus Reese made the tackle, and a late flag comes in. Is that Jason Stevens again? I think again? it was, yeah. There's a frustrated football player. He got beat on the touchdown. You remember he got in a little trouble in front of the Ohio State bench? And that's the type of energy you don't need. Enough that he's coming out right now. Yeah, that's pretty easy. That's an easy substitution. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, late hit. Defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Oh, boy. Yeah, see, there's Bob. He, that's it. I don't want to hear it is no. what Bob just told us. That's him. right. Now, I think Jason Stevens was on thin ice anyway, and uh, he might have just fell through. It's melting. You're right. <laughs> it's warming up. <laughs> Steve Balasari in tonight in this quarter has ignited this Ohio State offense. Here's Wiley who slips on his cut. Got a yard or so. Down to about the six yard line. Now Cooper working that sideline hoping for points before intermission with 119 and the clock winding down. Germany comes out of the lineup and they're going to go with a two tight end set now as Hauser and Wisniewski both in there at the six yard line. Wiley left side follows his blockers touchdown. That one 
looked easy. That one was easy. Don't get me wrong. I know Michael Wiley's an outstanding football player, and I, you know, I, Lynn's right. He's going to be a good football player, no what level, no matter what level he plays in. But at Ohio State, if you're the feature tailback, you get a thousand. You start with a thousand yards. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got a good team blocking for you. They blocked beautifully that time. Untouched. Goes in from five yards out to cap another scoring drive of 58 yards. Stalks for the point after. Trying to make it 21 unanswered. Buckeye points, and he does. Wiley's second score. This one a couple yards farther out than his first one. Those big guys, the biggins in front, he just trots in, prances in, looking behind him as if to say, is anybody going to touch me? Nobody did. Fouled Gilbert and Bentley off that side for the score. 10 Ohio State. Here was our Aflac trivia, uh, trivia question. When was the only time Ohio State and UCLA met in the Rose Bowl and which team won? And we will give you the answer following our kickoff. Interesting there. Uh, last year, both of these teams were cruising to play maybe for the national championship, Pac-10 and Big Ten, and they weren't going to meet in the Rose Bowl. That's right. <laughs> of course, Ohio State lost that Heartbreaker to Michigan State and then UCLA put Got up 600 it. yards or 670 against Miami and lost on a fumble. And there went national championship hopes for both. Freddie Mitchell from the goal line. Freddie straight up the middle bounces it out to about the 23 yard line. For the answer to our question, our Aflac trivia question, this guy can help us on the sideline with Swanee. Well, that's right. The Tracy Griffin, two-time Heisman Trophy winner, and he played in that game, which was a Rose Bowl, 1976, and UCLA won. But Archie, when you watch him out here today, does it bring back memories of that bowl game? Well, it it it, it brought back memories with our offense stuttering at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> now uh, they seem to be moving the ball the last three series, and I'm very very happy to see that because after that Miami game and these first few series we ran, I was wondering what was our offense going to be able to do. Give me your take on Michael Wiley. He's a different back than you were. Well, Michael's the, I think is an outstanding back. He's got uh, great feet. Uh, I think he's shown some strength here today. Uh, ran and powerful, and, and I just think he's going to do a wonderful job for us this year. Archie, thank you for coming down. Always appreciate seeing you. Always good seeing you too, Lynn. All right. Thank you. Well, that was in a season that would have been undefeated, spoiling a national championship hope in that 76 Rose Bowl, and that was after Ohio State had pounded UCLA 41 to 20 during the regular season. So they marched to the West Coast and thought they had one in the bag. And right. Too much sightseeing. I guess so. Too, <laughs> too much Hollywood. There's a lot sure. of sights out there for <laughs> Ohio boy to look at. Isn't there? <laughs> you don't have to be from Ohio to <laughs> think that. Second down and four. Okay. Sean Foster trying to pop off a first down run and can't. Got it out to the 31 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Burger King. When you have to have it your way, it just tastes better. And Budweiser made with the freshest all natural ingredients for the brewery fresh taste. Coming up, the Valvoline Halftime Report. John Saunders and Terry Bowden along. We're at halftime here. Ohio State is countered with three touchdowns to lead 21 to 10. Answered points has given them a 21 to 10 lead as we're just about set to start the third quarter. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson, we talked coming in about the quarterback situation that we'd see all four quarterbacks we have. I think things have clouded up maybe a little bit <laughs> more on one side and cleared up on the other. I, I guess, you know, Belisari's come in and done a nice job. Drew Bennett started off hot, but of course he had an interception that turned into a touchdown. But I think the story of the first half has been UCLA's big three receivers. Ryan Poley, Dixon, and Freddie Mitchell, Farmer, they've only caught one pass, right. and the emergence of the Ohio State receivers. We talked about what Ohio State had to do. Play 1990 Ohio State football, they have. Germany and Rambo have started to emerge. Germany had the long ball down to the seven, and then it was the pass in the corner from Steve Balasari, who came in and looked good, got it to Kenyon Rambo, so everybody's happy, as we said. Right, but if, but if Ohio State went in at halftime and said, Three receivers, the big three guys have one catch. They got to be elated with that. Absolutely. The kick will go down to Rainbow. Seven yards deep. Kenyon will take a knee, and we'll check in with Lynn Swan, who I know talked to both coaches. Swanee? Well, I talked to uh, 
Bob Toledo. He said, what we have to do is get the big plays. We've got to get our wide receivers into the play. We've got to come up with some big plays. On the defensive side, he said, we came close to getting some sacks, so we really have to go after them and apply more pressure. Now, when I talked to John Cooper, he said, we have to put a little more pressure on the, on the UCLA tight end. They've been getting off that line of scrimmage too clean. He also said, more of an eight-man front against our offensive unit. So what he wants to do is do a little more play action and then go up top, throw the ball just a little bit more. So I think both have a game plan. Both need to come up with the big play. And both will continue to alternate quarterbacks as Mockerman gets to start in the second half here for Ohio State. Out near the 25-yard line to Reggie Germany. Mockerman was fairly efficient in his time in the first half. Belisari just seemed to ignite a spark as we look at the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter first half statistics. Well, it comes back again. UCLA, what, did I, what I thought was the key to the football game for you. Clouded up maybe a little bit more <laughs> on one side and cleared up on the other. I, I guess, you know, Belisari's come in and done a nice job. Drew Bennett started off hot, but of course he had an interception that turned into a touchdown. But I think the story of the first half has been UCLA's big three receivers, Brian Poley, Dixon, and Freddie Mitchell, Farmer. They've only caught one pass right. and the emergence of the Ohio State receivers. We talked about what Ohio State had to do. Play 1990 Ohio State football, they have. Germany and Rambo have started to emerge. Germany had the long ball down to the seven, and then it was the pass in the corner from Steve Balasari, who came in and looked good, got it to Kenyon Rambo, so everybody's happy, as we said. Right, but if, but if Ohio State went in at halftime and said, three receivers, the big three guys have one catch, they gotta be elated with that. Absolutely. The kick will go down to Rambo. Seven yards deep, Kenyon will take a knee, and we'll check in with Lynn Swan, who I know talked to both coaches, Swanee. Well, I talked to uh, Bob Toledo. He said, what we have to do is get the big plays. We've got to get our wide receivers into the play. We've got to come up with some big plays. On the defensive side, he said, we came close to getting some sacks, so we really have to go after them and apply more pressure. Now, when I talked to John Cooper, he said, we have to put a little more pressure on the, on the UCLA tight end. They've been getting off that line of scrimmage too clean. He also said, more of an eight-man front against your offensive unit. So what he wants to do is do a little more play action and then go up top, throw the ball just a little bit more. So I think both have a game plan. Both need to come up with the big play. And both will continue to alternate quarterbacks as Mockerman gets to start in the second half here for Ohio State. Out near the 25-yard line to Reggie Germany. Mockerman was fairly efficient in his time in the first half. Belisari just seemed to ignite a spark as we look at the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter first half statistics. Well, it comes back again. UCLA, what, did I, what I thought was the key to the football game for UCLA was their ability to run the ball. Look at it, 34 yards at halftime. UCLA running the ball. That's death for them because it yep. takes them out of their passing game, their play action pass game. Second down and five here. And the Buckeyes jump on the right side. Henry Fleming, the right tackle, came out of his stance. And so that's going to back up what they gained on that pass play and bring up second Henry. down and 10. Only the second penalty against John Cooper's team. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense. <laughs> you saw that big exhale there from John, although in talking to him this week, and we go back many of those 12 years he's been here at Ohio State doing games here, and it always seems like the weight of the world has been carried on his shoulders to live up to the expectations of Buckeye fans. I got the impression, even though they were 0-1 coming into this, he didn't feel that way about this team. Amazing what a, a win over a team up north can do. <laughs> Dave Martin. And to about the 24-yard line. Marcus Reese is the guy that made the tackle there, Brad. He's a true freshman, and he's going to be forced into service probably the rest of this half because Billy Piper, as Lynn reported, is out of the football game. He's not going to play anymore. The backup linebacker who's playing for Ryan Neese in this football game. So, you know, this is a... Uh, defense that is going to get thinner and thinner and you're just going to run out of good players. Nobody has that many good players. At the 24, third down at six. And Mockerman will work from the shotgun. Martin and Wiley flank him there in the spread. Manning thinking about a safety blitz. They are going to come with a secondary blitz. Mockerman pumps and then goes deep. Just overshot his intended receiver. Little bit of contact, but nothing that would draw a penalty. Jason Bell was out there with Rambo. 
man-to-man -man -man coverage this time. Jason Bell is out there. He's teaming up with Ricky Manning. They're doing a pretty good job in coverage, I think. Even the Reggie Germany's catch was a good catch. Yep. Much better coverage than we're used to seeing from UCLA's corners a year ago. Absolutely. First three and out of the night for the Buckeyes. Boy, and that's a difference from two weeks ago against Miami. Now let's give Miami's defense some credit there. Stoltz to punt. Would be returnable for Freddie Mitchell. It will be from the 35. Got a nice block. Trying to stretch it to the sideline and got only about five. And a penalty marker comes flying in. I think we're going to have an illegal block on top of it. And we'll wait and see. Usually it's a block below the waist in that situation on Cheatwood, wasn't it? Here's a call. During the return, illegal block in the back on the returning team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. I think it might have gone against Paul Nelson. At any rate, UCLA will have the ball trailing by 11 when we come back. Third quarter, Ohio State 21, UCLA 10. A little under 13 minutes remaining in the third here. Look at Nate yeah. Clemens and Gary Berry over there. Gary Berry and Clemens. They're over there listening. UCLA's huddling on the sideline. They're over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's legal. Every edge you can get on the 27. Best starting field position of the night, if you can believe that, for UCLA from their own 27-yard line. Out to the 30-yard line. Well, we talked about the wide receivers, at least the big three wide receivers. Melsby's caught one. Farmer's caught one. But the ball has to go to the other guys. I mean, this UCLA offense, I appreciate the tight end as well as anybody. But you got three guys that can change the football game. I, t I tell you, if Lynn Swan was playing wide receiver, I wouldn't be able to get out of the huddle. <laughs> he... Second down and seven. Without an earful anyway. Bet. Bennett completes one finally to a wideout. Brian Poley Dixon's first catch of the night goes to the 40 yard line for a first down. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brad, Florida State number one trying to open up a little breathing room. Chris Wenke looking for who else but Peter Warwick. Looks like it's underthrown, but Terry Bowden tells me they practice this. He comes back to the ball, the touchdown 26 yards, seven reception for 130 yards, 35 21. Brad. 14-point difference there, an 11-point difference here. UCLA try to change that. On the option, pitch to Sean Foster. And Foster may have his best run of the night. He's been held in check. That was his 13th carry, but going in, 12 carries for 18 yards before he knocks off 9 or 10 there. Now he got 9 or 10 yards, Brad, but it was the option play, and Drew Brennan basically got him the yards. He pitched it to him real late. It was perfect. It was the right call against the Bear defense. Everybody's up front. Two linebackers right there. That's an eight-man front. The perfect call is the option. Bring it down. In man of line of scrimmage. Pitch it. That's simple. That's a perfect call against that defense. Second down and short from midfield. Pull back straight ahead for the first. The guy that has UCLA's only touchdown, Matt Stanley, into Buckeye territory. Brad Gary, you are talking about the receivers and getting in the hollow, and you're right. Brian Foley Dixon ought to be in the hollow with Sean about getting me the ball because of the active receivers coming back this year. Look at his touchdown to reception ratio. 4.5. Every 4.5 passes he catches, he scores. I'd be in the hollow and say, look, I'm due. Get me the ball. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Pitch it. Oh, pitch Keep it. it. <laughs> pitch it. There, there it is. Did. Deshaun Foster one-handed it. Still on his feet. Foster down to the 13-yard line. Flat down. His I thought it was a forward lateral at the 35. Maybe. Well, that was perfect execution by Deshaun Foster. If Drew Bennett had run a lot of option play, he would know that his running back was going to stay with him forever because he got the late pitch. You see Nebraska do it all the time. It's coming back. When you're running the option, it's the running back's job his coaching assignment is say stick with the quarterback there he is there's the pitch oh one-handed catch you called it exactly right brad and that ball was going just forward 
Just barely. Comes back, penalized from the spot of the foul, so it brings it back to the 40-yard line. Here's another look. <laughs> part lateral, part slip. Great grab by Foster. And all for naught. Yeah, it still makes it, though, second and short. It's still from the point of the spa, uh, a foul, so it's still a positive play. Second down, about three. Got man-to-man -man out here on the wide receivers. And around, Freddie Mitchell, a lot of room and a lot of blockers. Mitchell inside the 30, 20, cuts back, and all the way down to a first and goal for UCLA. So they're getting their wide receivers involved now in a variety of ways. Well, you couldn't help but look at the halftime statistics, and it was just glaring. We've got three potential pro football players here. We can't get them the ball. Now, Freddie Mitchell has thrown a pass. He's got his head ripped off a few times on kickoff returns, and now he runs the reverse, and it was a beautifully set up play again by Al Borges. All the way down to the seven-yard line, where they finally bring Freddie down, and it's first and goal Bruins. Melsby, the lone wideout, two tight ends set. Deshaun Foster on the carry to the corner, touchdown. The Bruins right back in the football game. And boy, did it get quiet in here in a hurry. Well, Deshaun Foster rode that ball right into the end zone, but Matt Stanley again is the guy that drove it in there for him. Stanley, the fullback, just locked up on a man and just pushed him into the end zone. That was easy running as, you know, it looks to me like Drew Bennett is slightly limping off the field too, and that was on that pitch play earlier in that series. Griffith for the point after. It's good. So Deshaun Foster from seven yards out has put UCLA back in the ball game. They trail by four. Yard drive in seven plays, a little over two minutes for UCLA to put it in the end zone. Deshaun Foster from seven yards out capped that 73 yard march. And you wonder now about just how much that took out of Drew Bennett on that pitch play. I know the adrenal, adrenaline's flowing right now for him, so it may not hurt as badly. And here's an onside kick by UCLA. Bruins had it bounce out, but I believe they covered it at the 38-yard line. So UCLA takes a shot right there. Chris Griffith with the onside kick. You know, this touchdown, Brad, looked pretty easy, and I think the reason is, is inside Jason Ott, the middle linebacker, missed an assignment. Watch him coming through here, because Matt Stanley comes around the corner, gets a break, great block, but Ohio State's defense was run around the end so easily here, I think they busted inside. That linebacker should have scraped outside. That's a young linebacker who's taken the spot of the big cat, Katzenboyer, and that was simple run-in against an Ohio State Buckeye defense. The way Matt Stanley's played tonight, Darrell Price is going to have to push to get his job back. Here's Mockerman throwing, and a diving catch by Kenyon Rambo. First down, 11-yard pickup out to the 49-yard line. Right in front of Ricky Manning, the freshman, who's manning that corner position right now for UCLA. Now Brad... Kenyon Rambo is one of the fastest guys on this football field, but Ohio State spends so much of the time throwing these outs. If the outs are thrown this way and you can't get the ball in his hands while he's on his feet, you take away one of his great assets. He's a guy that's got the kind of speed that Terry Glenn had here at Ohio State. Uh, they timed him in the winter in the 40 at 425. So with a name like Rambo, he can cause some havoc back there in secondary. Lynn, what, what do you do? You know, I, I know it from the quarterback perspective, but you want to be a team guy. But as a receiver, you know what you can bring to the field. How do you handle something like that? Well, what you have to do is not get frustrated. Realize that there's a philosophy here at Ohio State says we don't feature an individual. You're going to get your share, but then you have to make something happen when you get that opportunity and gain the quarterback's confidence. He's got five catches tonight, but only 31 yards, and this pass is tipped. Rambo would have been the intended receiver, but that one never made it. Anthony Fletcher got his hands on it. Coming up this Thursday night, ESPN's college football as Colorado State traveling to Utah to take on BYU. Coverage starts at 7.30 with college game night presented by Gateway. And if you happen to have an opportunity to see the BYU-Washington game this past Thursday night, you probably won't want to miss Kevin Federick and the BYU offense in that game coming up this Thursday night. Freddie Mitchell is out on the field right now playing in the secondary. 
Third down, 11. Ackerman, plenty of time. Deep middle, overthrew and intercepted. Picked off by Strykula. And the guy who walked on, made his first start last week and was named defensive captain tonight, has his second interception of the season. That one badly overthrown. Joey Strykula is playing in this game as a walkout. You mentioned it. And you know what happens when those type of guys play? Everybody rallies around a guy because he keeps making plays. We've seen Stanley make him. We've seen Strykula. What? Square in route coming in here. Pretty good coverage to the outside. Strykula's just going to sit back there and get the overthrow. This is simple. This was just a bad throw by the quarterback. Thank you for the gift. Just a bit high. Germany was not wide open, but open enough to complete the ball. That was a knuckler from the quarterback. I said to Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, when we talked to him this week, I said, you know, I was impressed with Strike Cooler's performance, nine tackles and an interception. He says he's been an inspiration to all of us all week long. He just did it again. His second interception of the year at UCLA. They think long ball. Bennett loads it and goes incomplete. Nobody home at about the 18-yard yeah. line. That was a bust by Corey Pullman, that pulley Coleman that time. He just went the wrong way. He had the wrong thing. Red, that was a perfect throw to the spot he should have went to. So they'll reload with a second down and 10 at the 47-yard line. UCLA, you can feel now, has that UCLA feel about them after getting that last touchdown drive. And you can see the game plan emerging to the wide receivers. I mean, they tried to run the ball. It's not happening. Let's go to our strength. Second down and 10 at the 47. Deshaun Foster broke one tackle and got inside the 45 to about the 43. Gary Berry hit him low there to knock him off his feet. And it's going to bring up a key third down situation. Third down in about five with nine minutes, 10 seconds remaining third quarter. It's Ohio State by four. Third down in this situation, UCLA, if they're in the shotgun, like to sprint out to the wide side of the field. They do it about two thirds of the time. Let's see if they're in the shotgun. Mitchell, Coley Dixon. They like to come this way, half roll. With Jermaine Lewis, the tailback. Bennett steps up, fires, oh, intercepted geez. by Plummer. He was down, but he caught it. Ahmed Plummer. Not a well-thrown ball intended for Danny Farmer, and Ohio State's got it back. Well, we said Bully Dixon misread one. The quarterback misread this. Bennett thought he had man-to-man -man coverage. Ohio State crossed him up and sat in the zone. Here's Plummer. Watch him look at the quarterback and let everything happen in front of him. Farmer's going to come across the formation. He just keeps his eyes on the quarterback, sees the ball, and baits inside. That's perfect zone defense. So after not having a turnover, we've had turnover within three plays of each other and penalty marker on the play before the snap Belisari by the way is back in at quarterback for the Buckeyes see that's the tough thing I think about a two quarterback system you make a bad throw and you're on the bench you got yanked right I mean, away you just can't make all the good throws you know the coaches used to tell me Let's listen to this official first. Illegal substitution, 12 men in the huddle, five-yard penalty, the down remains first. This is what used to happen. You'd come over and, and you'd throw an interception, and a coach would say, Gary, that's the worst time to throw an interception. I used to say, Coach, you told me a, oh, good, it's a time, good time, and I'll be happy to throw you one. You know, is coming out a good time, is going in a good time, the middle of the field not a good time. They're all not a good time to throw one. Well, Mockerman threw the last one. Bennett threw one as well. Belisari in there now to give to Wiley. And Michael Wiley gets it out to the 39-yard line across the original line of scrimmage. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. Do not follow, do not conform, be different. Just for Men blends away gray hair in five minutes. Looks so natural, no one can tell. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. And when you have it your way, it just tastes better. Looking in at Ohio Stadium, fourth night game ever. And the great shots we've had from the air, courtesy of Bud One Airship. Belisari thinking about putting one in the air, and does. Did he catch it? Rambo, the intended receiver, no, incomplete. So they, like UCLA, try to get it to the wideouts now here in the second half of this football game. There's a kid I think is going to be a real special player someday and maybe is pretty good already. Ricky Manning on the coverage. Talked about Ricky before. He's a baseball player. Been signed out of uh, high school. Played in the Twins farm system. 
watching the Twins play, it's not hard to get to the big leagues. <laughs> they, had, they had a no-hitter today. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> Ohio State's offense, that's what Belisari's done. Four out of six, including the touchdown toss. Wiley's had to work for his two scores in 68 yards from the shotgun. The left-hander goes deep in the middle. That rainbow, first down in UCLA territory at the 48-yard line. He got 12 on third and 10, so they move the sticks. Yeah. Two things right here. Great protection for Belisari to throw the ball, but a wonderful route by Kenyon Rambo. Watch, man-to-man, -man, get inside, then come back up field, freeze him, break over the middle, and a low throw over the middle. The receivers love low throws over the middle. There's a nice little shake coming yeah. off the line of scrimmage yeah. he had That's there, That's where too. not only has he got speed, he looks like he's a very, very good pass route runner. From the 49, Wiley with his fullback in front took that block. Jamar Martin helped break that one down to the 42-yard line. And Jamar's got to readjust his headgear a little bit because he put it on somebody over there on the corner. <laughs> 75 yards now for Wiley on 18 carries. And all he needs is one big one to really get that game, you know, up to about the 150-yard mark, and he's capable at any play. Fletcher's down again for the second time tonight. We'll check on him when we come back to the shoe after this. Fletcher went off under his own power, which he didn't do earlier in the game, and he continues to have trouble with that lower leg, shaken up on the last play. With 7.15 left third quarter, second down and three for the Buckeyes. Wiley on a counter. First down and a lot more. Wiley all the way to the 25-yard line. And he's on his way to a 100-yard game, the way things are going now, pickup of 18. And the way things are going is that Ohio State offensive line is starting to get in the flow of this football season. This is the counter play. Running it right from one side to the other, we get the pulling guys. Another gash up the middle. And a first down just inside the 25. Vanessa. Probit, one of the wide receivers now, along with Chad Cascio. They're just going to keep running it, and this time, maybe a yard for Wiley. That's it. Let's check in with John now, New York. John? Brad, the last four games, four-plus now, Georgia Tech against Florida State. Florida State held a 100 and nothing advantage in points in the second half until this one. Joe Hamilton to Kerry Watkins, and now it's 35-28 and 100-7. to Holy smokes, that could be a game that even if Florida State hangs on, Georgia Tech wouldn't lose their number 10 national ranking. Great one going on at Doak Campbell. Well, I think you're right there. They might not catch 107, but they don't have to catch up. They just got to play that game. Belisari, the out, incomplete. He intended yeah, for incomplete. Reggie Germany, who made a diving attempt at it in front of Joe Hunter at corner. And it will bring up third down and long. Third down and long. Score 21 to 17. I think this is a situation you'll see Ohio State call a safe play and maybe another one of those quarterback draws and kick a field goal, make it a seven point game if it doesn't get the first down. I don't think this is a spot where you want to put a young quarterback in a position to turn the ball over on third and long when you're in field goal range. He's had his quick chat on the sideline with the coaches and runs back to that huddle. Here he is in the spread offense again. He did pick up a first down on a quarterback draw earlier, as Gary was talking about. Third and nine here. Here comes a blitz. He's going to throw a fade to the corner. Germany goes up and can't come down with it. Jason Bell hung in there with him. See, if you're a quarterback, you have to fight the urge to always throw the fade. It's a low percentage pass, unless you got six foot five out there. I think that's a defensive coordinator's tried to bait you into that throw. Bump and run. You can see right there, Bell is saying, I know it's going to be a fade. All I got to do is stay with them. It's a pop up here, just get in the way. And that's a throw that I think if you're a quarterback, you got to fight that urge to not throw that all game. Certainly not a chip shot field goal attempt. They'll try from 43. Stultz missed from 44 against Miami and hit a couple 20 plus yarders. Got a lot of leg into this one. I don't think so. Nope. Pushed it to the right. In. Didn't get it. It's always that dreaded two things, distance and accuracy. <laughs> That's right. They're both right. <laughs> you know, it's like golf. <laughs> so they come away empty at Ohio Stadium. Looking in on a packed house of 94,000. It's Ohio State 21-17.
with Gary Danielson and Lynn Swan. Brad Nessler along with you. Since early in the first quarter, the defense for Ohio State has kind of settled down, but now the pressure has shifted, shifted back to the Ohio State defense. The Bruins have moved the ball. Ohio State has not been able to put points on the ball. Board, Ohio State needs a stop here. Drew Bennett in there at quarterback, a little bit hobbled after that last series, and he goes straight up the gut. Three-yard gain for Matt Stanley. As we look at our game summary, Matt was a big part of it. Off this double deflection and then off the back of his wide receiver, Stanley goes 67 yards for the touchdown. That put UCLA in front. They had a 10-point lead before Ohio State came back, kept an 81-yard march. Wiley from three yards out, then Belisari, perfect on the drive to Rambo. It was 14 to 10. Wiley again, this time seven-yard gallop. And then Deshaun Foster had a seven-yarder of his own as an answer on the other end. That's where we are. 21-17, and Bennett comes up firing and overshot his fullback, the intended receiver. It'll be third down and seven upcoming. Remember, Ohio State has not started a season 0-2 since 1986. They lost in that kickoff classic that year and then subsequently lost to Washington following the loss to Alabama. 0-2 13 years ago. They don't want 0 2 again. They're in front here, but they're playing a rejuvenated UCLA bunch since halftime. Bennett. Almost intercepted by Nate Clements, who made a nice play on the ball. Nelsby was the intended receiver. Pretty good. Pretty good pressure inside again. The time it was Cortland Bullard that made the rush up the middle. And that was a guy that Ohio State really missed against Miami. He was a guy that the NCAA sat out for a game. Missed the opener against Miami. Great stop by the Ohio State defense. Fixie to punt. If I'm the special teams coach, I tell this kid to hurry up a little bit. Although the return is on again. And the kick. Clements on the run at the 35. And a penalty marker down as he got to the 45. A 10-yard return, but it may all come back with an illegal block. As Dave Whitvote, our referee, goes down to have a look. And here's the call. Illegal block on the return. And that'll negate the 10-yard run back. Coming up, September 21st, Tuesday, Heather Locklear joins the cast of Spin City, plus Yankee pitcher Roger Clemens will be a guest star on the season premiere. Spin City, September 21st, right here on ABC. They're going to walk this one back to about the 33-yard line as we look over the post and down to the huddle. Sure looks a long way down there, doesn't it? Boy, it does. <laughs> that looks like a mile away to the other end. Now I know why we didn't score much. Every time I look at that distance. <laughs> <laughs> at least not all in one chunk. Belisari at quarterback. Sophomore out of Boca Raton, Florida. He's got Derek Combs and Jamar Martin behind him. This will be Combs. Fletcher is back in there again, and he made the tackle. He continues to fight through, but out to the 40-yard line goes Combs. I think you really have to hand it to the UCLA defense in this football game. You know, we did a couple of Pac-10 teams already in this year, and I thought they bo both tackled so poorly that there was no way they could win the game. So far in this game, Bob Fields' defense at least has tackled well, and they're, they're standing up about as well as can be expected, considering how thin they are. Second down along three. Belisari fires to Germany. That's a first down. Out to the 48-yard line. Belisari's had a conversation with Tim Salem, too, his quarterback coach, about who he needs to look for offensively. Any time Scott got big, he's a good job sitting the press. You can always get an opportunity to peek. You got your safety, and peek at the press guy. Yeah, okay. So you're ready for like a 479 throwback. Okay. Right? Definitely. All right. How about the end of that one? Give the phone to Austin. <laughs> it's a party line. Yeah, I can't see. I can't find him, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry the code doesn't the cord doesn't carry that far. <laughs> can't see him. He must be downstairs. I'm sure he's around someplace, Coach. 
<laughs> First down on that toss by Belisari out to Germany, out to the 48-yard line. You know, quarterbacks, and Timmy Salem was a quarterback when he played in college, and uh, same thing. Be careful of that fade pass is what he told them. That was that third down pass. You know, we've got other guys to throw the ball to. That's a low-percentage ball. They fake the draw. Belisari's going deep for Rambo. Penalty marker down. Joe Hunter draped on Rambo. Maybe made an excellent play there picking up a penalty. Well, most people like the college rule that that's only a 15-yard penalty. But occasionally, a penalty like that spoils a big play because right there, that was going to be a huge play and a smart penalty, as you call it. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Remember, in the pros, that's a spot foul. In college, it's 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. What it does is encourage defensive backs, if you think you're beat, grab them. Instead of giving up 55 yards, give up five yard, 15 yards. So that's a smart play, but it sometimes keeps some big plays from happening in college football. You saw Hunter drape that right arm around the shoulder pad of Kenyon Rambo and the reaction of the Ohio State quarterback. And that was the throwback pass that Tim Salem we heard telling Belisari over the phone that he was going to come back to. So the penalty not down inside the five but rather at the 36 yard line. And that is the sixth penalty on the defensive unit for UCLA of their 10 total. And you know Bob Toledo won't like that double figure total in penalties. First down Buckeyes at the 36 of the Bruins. Here's a toss to Combs. Got a couple nice blocks and then got pelted out of bounds. Ed Stansberry came over from his middle linebacker position to make the hit. We talked about UCLA playing 11 man defense. This is what I'm talking about. Watch Pete Holland inside number 75. He gets inside and closes down the lane for the running back to run in. Watch it. He pops through on block. And then you got to run. Everybody runs so the lanes aren't as big, and that's why they're not missing as many tackles. Pick up of three on that one. And a second down and seven upcoming. UCLA trying to keep Ohio State out of the end zone, trailing by four. They come up with a nice defensive stop there. Marcus Reese is the first man there. Coker helped him out. And Strykula. The starting safety, Joey, on his way to the locker room limping. He had an interception earlier in this quarter. Doesn't it always seem like, you know, if you go to the golf course, you don't have any balls, you hit a few in the water. You know, if you go to the golf course and you, you, you've got one driver, you break your driver. Well, that's what's happening to... The driver just broke. <laughs> the driver just broke. They don't have any more clubs. They're running out of DBs back there for UCLA. They're telling us it might be cramps, so maybe he'll get some fluid and be back out here. We hope so. He's had a good football game again. Third down, a long eight coming up for Belisari from the gun. Rambo to the near side, Germany out wide to the left. Here comes a blitz on Belisari, and he's going to take off. You can bet. Here he goes. Head to the stick. Did he get there? If not, he's awfully close. Audi Attar is the guy that made the stop right in front of Bob Toledo. Looking at whether or not that's a first down. Definitely a first down. Belisari takes the ball. And Brad, when he decided to run, he did the smart thing. He tucked it away, and he's going right for the chaser. Watch his dive. He sees a marker. He goes right for it. Good call, Swanee. He got it. He's got some giddy up, too. I'll tell you that. Once he gets going, you know, this was not a design run. This was he got back in the pocket, did Steve. Nothing was there. His original guy wasn't there, and he made a first down on his own that time. By the way, lest you think he's a little guy with speed, he's 6'3", 220. Down just outside the 25, and the fullback, Martin, blasts his way inside the 20. Jamar's first carry. Belisari's two runs, both came on third down, and both picked up first downs, and that's what John Cooper likes to see. And not only that, does he like to see is one was a design, and one was just off of a pass. That's when that quarterback starts to make plays for you. Steve has thrown the ball a little better tonight than, frankly, I thought he yep. would. I watched him in practice, and he's a, a little more fluid player in the game. And some guys are better throw players in the game than in practice. He looks like to be one of those guys. And second down, Combs all wrapped up. Marcus Reese has had a good football game from his outside linebacker position. He really position. has. He really has. 
They lose a Ryan Neese, they get a Marcus Reese. He might be quite a player, maybe both of them when they yeah, get back in there. The Reese piece, it's their plan back there because Billy Piper was the starter, but this guy, a true freshman, is making plays. And, you know, Bob Field told us he was a player, and we can see why. He's just running down plays from behind. Third down and long. And they've been in this situation before, but this time they won't work from the shotgun. Looks like Ohio State is expecting the blitz. They're going to keep their tight end in here. Play action. Delisari, plenty of time. Fires on the run, got Rambo. Now, where did forward progress go? First down at the 15. Whew, he threw a rocket there. That's not the way it should be spotted. It should be spotted where he comes down. Where he came down was about a yard and a half behind where they're marking. In college ball, you can push the player out of bounds. Play action pass, great protection up front. Belisari starts to scramble, good Rambo finds him, and look at that. That's almost out of bounds. And that's the question you have, did he land out of bounds? And obviously the officials said no. One more look. Pretty close. Combs, no gain on the play. Marcus Reese again, the first guy there. Wow, true freshman out of San Jose. Twenty-one to seventeen as the third quarter closing down here. A minute forty-five left. One more look, Gary. Coming out, get hit. College ball. You can drive him out of bounds. His right foot comes down, but it did it come down short of the first down. That's another question. There's a lot of things. We get this slow motion. We can see yep. everything. Dave Perry and his group will be looking at that all week. Okay. There's a fumble. UCLA covers it. They've got it back at the twenty-five. Ken Coker comes up with a fumble recovery. Ed Stansberry, the middle linebacker, a former quarterback, made a wonderful play on this one. Coming from behind, tackling and ripping the ball at the same time. One of the best plays by a UCLA. Watch number 15. Sees it, hits it from behind, jumps on the player and rips it three. Three. That is a wonderful play by a former quarterback. That's why I'm glad I wasn't big. They put me back at linebacker. What a play by Stansberry. And then Ken Coker was the guy the defensive player of the game against Boise State last week who covered that fumble here's the option late pitch to Foster Deshaun diving out at about the 32 yard line so UCLA right back in the hunt here trailing by four in the closing moments of the third quarter coming up tomorrow night on ESPN something that we have been looking forward to I know my partners have in fact as the Cleveland Browns are back and they'll take on the Pittsburgh Steelers on ESPN's Sunday Night Football then Monday night Terrell Davis and the two time defending champion Broncos take on Dan Marino the Miami Dolphins Monday night at 9 Eastern Al Boomer and Leslie will have that one for you. Uh, quite a twin bill to kick off the NFL regular season, the 30th year, by the way, of ABC's Monday Night Football. I'm heading up to watch that opening game in the new stadium up in Cleveland. You and Swanee both going to that game. Going to have some fun there, I'm sure. Uh, I bet I got a better seat than Swanee. I got good connections. Yeah, there. I know you do. <laughs> Second down and three. Geithner in at fullback now in front of Deshaun Foster. Play action. Bennett. Wanting to throw, lost the handle, and it's covered by Ohio State. He just lost his grip, and Jason Ott said, I'll take it. So much like a few moments ago when we had back-to-back -back interceptions, we almost had back-to-back -back fumble recovery. Yeah, that's a tough one for UCLA. Drew Granite's trying to get outside this time on the play. Looks like he's going to make it around the end and make a play. I think he bumps, just drops it completely, almost bumps it off his own knee. And Jason Ott was the guy right there. And boy, that's a tough one. That's a nightmare one for a quarterback. There's the turnovers we talked about. Each team squirted with right out of his hand. An interception and a fumble now. At the 30, Belisari, nice play fake. Deep down the middle, has got a man wide open inside the tennis with Wisniewski as huge tight end. And it's first and goal, Ohio State. 
First catch by an Ohio State tight end, and it's a big target, 6'5", 265. This was a complete bust by UCLA. They did not know where to line up. Look at the safeties here, and the tight end is going to come right down. He's open for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's what happens when you don't line up, and that's shades of 1998 for UCLA. Just when it looked like they had the break they needed to prevent Ohio State from scoring any more points in this quarter, they find the Buckeyes first and goal at the eight. Wiley down to about the four, maybe the three. I'll tell you, a slight confusion again by UCLA. When you see two or three guys pointing and not a lot of movement, you know there's slight confusion. And right now, UCLA could serve themselves well by taking a timeout and regaining their composure here. Just outside the three-yard line is where they bring down Wiley. He's a couple yards shy of the century mark. If he gets another handle here and a touchdown, he'll go over that going mark. the wrong way. It's the fullback, Martin. Martin. Touchdown. wasn't set. Ohio State senses it and runs right at him again before they do, and that was just too easy. Three straight plays. UCLA had no idea what they were doing. Stalks in for the point after. Has it up and good. We've got one play left before the end of the third quarter. It's Ohio State again by 11. Seventeen. And remember, that started when Drew Bennett lost the handle on what looked to be yet another option. And it was recovered by Jason Ott, the middle linebacker. Three plays and 30 yards later, the Buckeyes in the end zone. Freddie Mitchell from the goal line. Only out to the 21-yard line to end the third quarter. So UCLA's got their work cut out for them. Playing in front of a hostile crowd, they trail 28-17. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Lynn Swan with you at Ohio Stadium where the Buckeyes lead 28-17. And UCLA starts offensively at its own 21-yard line. And Freddie Mitchell, who returned that kick out to the 21, hobbled off the field and right when they need all their big hitters in this fourth quarter they might have a hole in the lineup he's trying to run it off on the sideline Bennett play action getting some heat a lot of it down he goes second sack of the night this one's Brent Johnson with help from his friends you know great sack there but great coverage in the secondary that time misdirection play they tried to get the fullback and the tight end open both were covered right off the bat, and Bennett just had to eat it. And that was perfect coverage by Ahmad Plummer that time. The linebackers on the tight end coming across. Danny Farmer trots out there. So does Brian Poley Dixon. They come toward you there on the near side. On a second down at 13. Two tight ends set. Diggs thinking about a blitz. He'll bring it. Drew Bennett trying to buy time. Throws incomplete, intended for Jermaine Lewis. And it's hard to run believe, it for his hard life to right believe now. that wasn't offsides. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. Brad, time for the Win Your Way Burger King play of the day. Notre Dame and Purdue. Purdue with a lead 28-23. Jerry's Jackson gets sacked on third down. Now watch, trying to get his team to line up on the line of scrimmage as you watch the clock tick away. And it would expire before they get the playoff. Darius Jackson had a pretty good day, but could not get this playoff. So, anyway, Burger King play of the day, 28-23, Purdue. And that was the infamous 14 Irish on the field at one time. Here's a slip screen to Paulie Dixon. On the run with a head of steam. He doesn't get a first down, but he gets out to the 29-yard line. And it's going to bring up a punting situation again. Fourth down and a couple. 
That is, UCLA has now missed their last eight third down conversions. A lot of that reason is they're getting those third and very long. Right. And, you know, that was a pretty successful play, picking up 12 yards, but smart defense by Freddie Puckage, the coordinator, playing zone and letting things happen in front of them. Nate Fixie to punt. Nate Clements waits on the other end. End over end kick. Clements runs up on it at the 34. Got around the first man. A couple more. And across midfield. Nice run back by Nate Clements. 18-yard punt return into UCLA territory with 13 minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the ball game. Ohio State's got the lead and the ball when we come back. State needs to go for the knockout right now. Belisari has to tell his guys, we stick it in, we win this football game. He's at the controls from the 48-yard line. Here's the toss. To Wiley. Got a nice block from Martin again. Wiley's over 100 and he's over the UCLA defense all the way down to the 27 yard line. What a beautiful block and you called it by Jamar Martin that time. The true sophomore just came out and took the legs out of the ball. Santee Hall, number 95, the linebacker, the left side of your screen. Let's see if we catch it right there. A little chop block and a good block by the wide receiver that time coming in to block on the strong safety. That's the type of thing. See, you throw the ball to the receivers, then they come in and block. Give them a little sugar, they'll do the other stuff. <laughs> he got some sugar with a <laughs> exactly. short touchdown. Just got some more for Michael Wiley. You got to give him some sugar. 119 and two touchdowns for Wiley now. Starting to put it together. He struggled in the first half for his yardage, getting it in bigger chunks now. Here's a quick toss. Reggie Germany almost got away from Ricky Manning. And he made a shoestring tackle at the 19-yard line. Well, we talked about our Dell game solutions coming into this thing, and you said the wide receivers had to come up and play big, and they are now. Well, not only did they play big, and they said, hey, we could have played big last game. You didn't <laughs> throw the ball to us. And I think the game plan, remember, these are wide receivers a year ago. As Lynn said, it's not individual guys. It's the systems. A year ago, Boston and Miller averaged 12 catches a game. Right now, they're at 13. Perfect game plan. Second down and short. Rambo in motion across the field. And he might come back for the end of the round and does. Got a great block from his quarterback, Kenyon Rainbow. Stepped out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Oh, there are quarterback blocks, and then there are quarterback blocks. <laughs> Rambo stepped out at about the seven. The linesman was all over it. Rambo, go over and say thank you to your quarterback. Because this is a decleater. Knocked him right off his cleats. And then the action afterwards comes back and gets a defensive end, Rusty Williams. And it jumps about three feet afterwards, celebrating for it. Beautiful play. There's the play. Oh. Woo, now jump up. <laughs> that'll win your teammates over, and that'll win you a job. Good point. At the eight-yard line, first and goal. Man-to-man -man outside on the slot. Straight ahead, fullback not much this time. Jamar, who had a short touchdown run the last time they had the ball, stopped by Santee Hall that time. Now it'll bring up second down and goal, actually closer to the 10. He may have lost a yard on the play. Passing well, situation, I'm sorry, Brad, but it's a situation you might want to use your quarterback. He's fired up, he just had a great block. Maybe roll him out, quarterback draw, something where you get him on the run. He's a great athlete. Look at the coverage. One receiver, man-to-man -man outside. On Rambo, they roll that way, looking to throw, and he does to the end zone, touchdown! <laughs> Penalty marker at the eight-yard line, but Gary called it and Belisari delivered it. Let's see what the flag's about. Offside, UCLA, touchdown, Ohio State. Offside, defense. Penalty is declined, the touchdown is goal. It's just like being a basketball coach. You got a guy that's hot. You got a quarterback that just made a big block. He wants the ball. You got receivers that say, I own these defenders right now. Go to them, give them that ball again, put everything together. That's a perfect call by the coaching staff. And it was a high heater from the left arm of Balasari, who holds for the extra point. 
And it's just tucked in that left upright by Stokes. There's the hot quarterback. Is he fired up or what? 35-17, Buckeye. And when things were getting shaky, it seemed a few moments ago when UCLA had the ball and trailed only 21 to 17, but now the Buckeyes have put in a couple of quick touchdowns. Short run by Martin and then Belisari to Rambo a moment ago, and they lead now 35 to 17. Ricky Manning back there as a kick returner after Freddie Mitchell was shaken up on the previous kick. And let's go back to the touchdown gear. Just like the touchdown before that was thrown to the outside because of the strength inside by Ohio State running the ball. Bob Field has to put 10 guys inside. That means it's man to man coverage to the outside, one on one to the outside. Rambo is going to be too tough in that situation, right, Lynn? He's going to be a happier right, guy, this is, too. This is a much needed game for Kenyon Rambo. I mean, he's, he wants to be a part of this offense. I talked to his mother and father at Thursday's practice. They were telling me that, you know, he, he still enjoys this game, but he was getting a little frustrated. You know, he has a lot of skills, a lot of talent. People keep talking and comparing him to Joy Galloway, his quickness and strength but they weren't getting him the ball. Now he's got the confidence. Now football is fun again. He should continue on this track. And he and Germany, we just saw on the sideline, both happy campers right now with their team in front, 35-17. You know, and Lynn's right on there, uh, Brad. You know, Rambo waited for a coming out party almost yeah. two years. You know, it was like one of those parties at Catholic school that I went to. They used to measure the, the skirt lengths. You know, they were, no, they were no fun. You know, I mean, he wanted a better party than that, his first one. Yeah, those long pleated skirts. Right, you know remember that? Yeah, yeah, remember those. See, that's the type of party you see. You gotta have, you gotta get the priest to go home. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Second down, 10 yards. Straight up the middle, first down. Is John Foster still trying to drag guys out there? And he's got a first down run before Bullard finally brings him down. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. In recognition of those athletes, Chevrolet make a contribution to each. University's general scholarship fund. At beginning this year, Chevrolet also makes a donation to each player's high school. Well, there's certainly a guy that's in the running right there. And Jan Rambo. First first down since there were 11 minutes left in the third quarter right there for UCLA. And they need a bunch of them right now from the 34. And it's pause at quarterback. On the roll and throwing long. Danny Farmer's open. Got him. Down to the 26-yard line. Barry and Clements are back there, but Farmer's got a big game. Yeah, Gary Barry, where were you on this play? Your corner is depending on you. This was a stutter to the outside. Play action pass to that half of the field. Hey, your all Big Ten free safety should make that play. Watch the stutter play. Farmer comes down, stutters. The ball's in the air for an hour. Come on, free safety. Get over there. Get over there. There he is, finally. That's one you expect if you're a corner to help you out on that. 40-yard pickup to the 26 of Ohio State. UCLA trying to get something in gear here and get back in the football game. Pause. Throws out in the flat. Got his fullback, Geithner. And Geithner bangs his way down very close to another first down. Niall Diggs and Donnie Nicky make the stop. They may have to measure this one. Brad, you know, we've been talking about why people miss tackles. Well, let me show you why people don't miss tackles. Watch the secondary right here and watch the pursuit of the ball. Once the ball is thrown for all, against Ohio State, yeah, we got a completion. Now watch everybody run and converge. Anybody can make tackles when you got four guys around the ball like that. That's called 11-man defense. Freddie Mitchell's checked back in at wide receiver for UCLA, but they keep it on the ground. Jermaine Lewis, nothing doing in there. The interior defense of Ohio State led by Johnson and Brown make the stop. Only 12 yards on five carries for Jermaine Lewis tonight. It's been tough sledding for the running backs of the Bruins. It really has. And, you know, we thought that was one of the keys to the football game, establishing their two running backs in this football game. They have not been able to do it. Credit the Ohio State defense. Yeah. I mean, they're a great rush defense. They, they, it's not like they're going to change overnight. UCLA's wide receivers tried to spread them out, but the rushing game still hasn't emerged. Melsby and Farmer, the wideouts now for pause on second down and 10. Looking for Melsby across the middle. He almost caught that for the touchdown. That one had some heat on it, and Brad, who's got great hands, just couldn't quite pull it in. I'll tell you something I used to hate to have happen is you throw the ball to one guy, and then you watch the film, and someone else is wide open. Watch the, touch, the tight end come across. There's a bust by the middle linebacker right here, a young middle linebacker. 
no one covers the tight end. Oh, He's brother. chasing him, <laughs> and that's one of those ones where you have to be tough-minded to play quarterback because the whole team sees that on Sunday, and you threw the wrong guy. Third down and 10. They've been terrible on their third down conversions this half. Pause to the end zone. Farmer, and it's in and out of his hand. Oh, boy. You know, if he has more practice time, I don't think he drops that ball. Well, Farmer has a 41-inch vertical. He jumped 10 inches on that. That's a bad ankle. That's when you're favoring ankle. one ankle and you try to jump unnaturally off the other one, you're not going to get up. This He puts this in his pocket all day. In fact, in, in uh, volleyball, he spikes it, too. That's a ball he'll catch all day, as like you said, if he'd been practicing. Was thrown a little bit behind him. 33-yard field goal attempt by Griffith. And the kick up, and they figure they need three somewhere along the line. They get it here to cut the lead to 15. So now, should they be able to get the ball back? Two-point conversion, a couple of touchdowns, and they're in the hunt. Right now, they trail 35-20. That's going to emerge before the end of the that hurt him, but a team that doesn't have any quit in them and they're making tackles. I don't see guys falling all over the field. I see a UCLA team that will get better on defense this year. Well, it's certainly not the one that made Ron Dane look like Jim Brown in the Rose Bowl, I'll tell you that much. Edger and James and Ron Dane are going to have to send them part of their salary. <laughs> Third and nine, Belisari airing it for Germany. Got it! Wow! At the nine-yard line! Wow! <laughs> 35 yards! And Rambo and Germany have both lit up things here in the second half, courtesy of the left arm of Belisari. David Boston who? D. Miller who? Joe Germain who? <laughs> oh, man, what a layout right here. Beautiful one, catch. One thing that Ohio State has had in the last 10 years here is great wide receivers, and it has changed this whole program here when they've started to bring guys from Joey Galloway on on that can start to make plays at that wide receiver position. Westbrook, left side, touchdown! Everybody's joining the party. Jerry Westbrook's a junior. Takes it in from eight yards out. That is your fourth string running back. That'd be good. <laughs> No doubt in my mind that UCLA is wearing down. They're not quitting. They're not giving up, but they're wearing down tough. It's a tough game for the UCLA defense, especially in the second half. Stoltz extra point is good. 6.37 remaining. Bob Toledo saying, come on, guys, let's hang in there. It's hard to hang in when the Buckeyes have shown us so many weapons. They lead 42-20. have relief from the packed house at Ohio Stadium after Westbrook's eight yard touchdown has widened the gap back to 42 to 20 now. Ohio State in command and UCLA running out of time and energy with 637 remaining in the ball game. Yeah, I don't think if I'm UCLA, I even put Danny Farmer back in the football game. This baby's over for you don't want to get a guy hurt all season. They can still go into the Pac-10. Looks to me like UCLA will still make a run at that Pac-10 championship. Stoltz kick. We'll go to Manning at about the four. Ricky Manning, the freshman. Did he lose the ball? Sure did. Fumble on the kick return. Still trying to unpile bodies. Let's see who's got it. I think UCLA got it. UCLA back. has maintained possession. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson with you. And a little while ago, we talked about crosstalk with Gary. We had the question, if you're a coach, you want a two-quarterback system, or do you want one main starter and then maybe a marginal so type of backup? we got some calls, huh? We got some hits on this thing? We got some I'll hits be, on I'll this thing, I bet you think. anything, it went for one guy. There's the question again. If you were a major college football coach, would you prefer the two-quarterback system? Like in Arizona. Right. Or would you like the clear-cut starter and a marginal backup like a Purdue, a Drew Brees? Yeah. Well, a lot, we of, a lot of folks jumped on BCS online at ESPN.com. We'll give you the answer to that after this snap, which in a two-quarterback system right now has... Corey Paws playing quarterback for UCLA, and he zips it out to Brad Melsby, and Melsby goes out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. So, cross talk with Gary brought 
thousands and thousands and oh, thousands really? of responses. All right, and look at that. 22% said we'd take two even guys. The other one said 78% would like the clear-cut starter. And, and understand, a marginal backup there. Right. You know what, though? Out of that 22%, a lot of those were the college coaches calling. <laughs> so it's still a little that's bit. That's right. <laughs> I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty easy one this week. We appreciate know? all you coaches getting online with us tonight. And it's nothing against this guy no. right here. I mean, he, you know, that's what happens in college football. When you go to these major colleges, you know that they're going to be bringing great guys behind you. You know which place I think is the most potentially, you know, biggest problem that could blow up is down in Texas. That little major Applewhite is not going to get beat out. No, he doesn't want to give up that job to Chris no. Sims. And Chris Sims is just a, a true freshman, but Major Applewhite is only a sophomore. That is very combustible. Yep. Georgia winner over South Carolina tonight. You see the other scores. There's the Purdue game that we had earlier for you today on ABC. Here's pause, and it is intercepted. Threw it right into the wrong pause. Donnie Nicky. The safety with the interception. With 6.13 left, the Buckeyes of Ohio State have it in command. Eagle One A to Z wheel cleaner removes stubborn brake dust easily. And Eagle One waits. And they have gone back to Austin Mockerman at quarterback. So with the game in hand, Ohio State goes back to their initial starter after Belisari came in and lit things up. Here's a toss to Combs. Nice little sidestep to get down to the 44-yard line. Brad and Gary, you were talking about wide receivers, and there have been some excellent wide receivers down through the history of Ohio State. You see David Boston, who left Terry Glenn. Uh, Joey Galloway, Jeff Graham, Chris Carter, Warfield, and Fred Pugich, and the people are highlighted are because they're here at the ball game. Fred Pugich, of course, the defensive coordinator, <laughs> and Joey Galloway standing right next to me. We'll talk with Joey in a second. Here's a play action for Mockerman. Goes back the other way, and Chad Cashier with a catch. Swanee. So, Joey, no contract with the Seattle Seahawks. Are you here? Before we talk contract, tell me about the tradition of wide receivers here at Ohio State. You know, Chris Carter started off, you know, for us for us guys that are still around, you know, Fred Pugich, I always joke with him that uh, he's a little bit before our time, we don't remember him. <laughs> but uh, there's been some great athletes play receiver here, and we got a couple good ones out there right now. You guys have a core of players who come here who work out in the off season, and it's pretty intense. Boston's worked with you, Miller, a lot of the young guys on the team. It's a great program. You know, we, we know uh, how we got to that next level, and we all want to come back here, you know, help the younger guys and also help ourselves. I don't know if many guys are going to lift it or a bench press of 400 pounds or you bench press or come up with your speed but Kenyon Rambo looks like a guy who might have the speed to make some Jerry things Westbrook happen here. Yeah he, he definitely is you know when we work out in the summer Kenyon's a guy that I compete against now with the speed you know he can fly and he'll be the next great receiver here. Got to ask you one con one contract question where do you stand now with the Seahawks? Well, right now I'm standing next to you, so I'll let you know where I, where I am with the Seahawks. You know, I'd rather be playing right now, but but if not, what a better place to be in, in Ohio State. I'm next to you. Well, I, I, Joey, I have a cell phone, so if uh, Holmgren's not asleep, maybe he can give me a call. If you got the phone number, we, we'd love to hear what you're thinking. Joey, thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, Swanee. Good to see you, Joey. What a great receiver here. And they have had uh, many, many great ones that we talked about. And David Boston, by the way, the all-time receiving leader with 191 catches. But Chris Carter's 168 is still number two. So you go down that list, and there's some great ones over the years. And, Joey, we hope to see you back in a Seahawk uniform in a hurry. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevy Silverado. It's not just any truck, it's the truck. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Dell, innovative computer solutions from the company that pioneered direct around the world. Be direct, Dell. As you look in on uh, the horseshoe, our aerial shots tonight at Ohio Stadium provided by Budweiser's own Bud One Airship, seen by millions on its ongoing goodwill tour. This Bud's for you. Guys, thanks for being up there. Beautiful pictures on a beautiful night. And only the fourth night game in the history of this fantastic stadium. 78 years Ohio State's called this home, and we get the good shots from up there. 
from Bud One. And uh, you talk about a perfect night for football. In the low 70s at kickoff, most of the folks have been tailgating since about noontime today. It's been a long day, but a happy day now for Buckeye fans because they're three and a half minutes away from erasing some of the memory of the and getting rid of some of the bad taste in their mouth from that Miami opener in the kickoff classic. Pause in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Not only did Ohio State win this football game pretty handedly, Brad. Remember, one of the touchdowns for UCLA was on a freak play when Percy King should have intercepted the ball. But they also emerged with what I think is confidence in the quarterback position, whomever they choose. Uh, we're leaning towards Belisari, but we're not going to make that decision. And remember, when we talked to the coaches, of course the goal was to win the football game, but also to find a quarterback because they're going to enter that stretch soon when they're going to play Wisconsin. Purdue and Penn State, and yep. they have to be ready at the quarterback position for those three teams. His pause, throwing out complete to Danny Farmer, and he's out of bounds with a first down, and we go to our New York studios and John Saunders. John? Pass complete. Well, Georgia Tech will not go away against Florida State. Joe Hamilton, four touchdown passes. This one to Kelly Campbell. Watch the catch. One hand hauls it in, and we have a game. 41 to 35. Hamilton, 14 of 14 in the second half, part of 22 of 25. And Georgia Tech still in it with 135 to go. Well, there could be a situation there where even if Georgia Tech loses, it certainly didn't hurt Joe yeah. Hamilton's Heisman possibility. 22 of 25 for four touchdowns. Are you kidding me? What a great player. Wow. 14 out of John. John, 14 out of 14 and a half. That's unbelievable. You know, almost another disaster for UCLA on that last play, Brad. A game's really co coming down to meaning nothing right here. Here's Danny Farmer in the football game. Watch. He gets his ankle kind of ripped on this play, and he got up very slowly. I don't know if I've got a uh, you know a meal ticket like that. I, I don't have them in the game at this position in the, in the you, football you game. You said that nine minutes ago. That's exactly right. I mean, what if you lose them for five five more games here? In a losing effort, when you're down 22, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Just under three to play in the game. Pause. Going deep. He's got a man down the sideline and overshot. Brian Poley Dixon. This read threw it the wrong direction. That should have gone the other way. Young quarterbacks, especially young quarterbacks that you're rotating. Remember, you're only getting half the practice plays. Yeah. So that's a, that's another problem. And I think one of the things that happens in a two quarterback system, and again, you press to impress. Mm -hmm. it, it's only natural. You want to play, you know, and it, that, that position does not lead to rotation. You know, it's the only position in sports that I say you have to play and orchestrate at the same time. You need a leader. I think Ohio State found theirs tonight. UCLA still searching for theirs. Pause from the shotgun. Fires way out too far in front of his intended receiver, Cody Joyce. Coming up Tuesday, September 21st, it's the most shocking Dharma and Greg you'll ever see. Greg's gone? Well, don't miss a season premiere. Tuesday, September 21st on ABC. Brad Nestler, Gary Daniels, Sun and Lynn Swan at Ohio Stadium, where the Buckeyes are on their way to a one and one mark. Came in ranked 14th. UCLA was ranked 13th. That will all change on Monday. Fixie set to punt away. And Nate Clemens, fair catch taken at the 31 yard line. 235, all that remains between. Ohio State in their first victory of the season. I never dreamed until. 35 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ohio State just trying to ice this thing away on their way to a win over UCLA. Both teams will be one and one in about two minutes and 29 seconds. And UCLA is going to take a timeout. Yeah, they tried to ice that one with only 10 men on the field. <laughs> That's why John's upset, and he's upset at the quarterback. That's the quarterback's job to know how many guys are out there. Poor Austin. He's caught the, the brakes the wrong way tonight, didn't he? Yes, he has. John Cooper was not happy on the sideline. He will be when this one's over, though, because he's going to add to that win total. Our Applebee's game fact, the winningest active coaches in college football, Joe Paterno had to struggle to get his 310th today. Bobby Bodden still working on 294 against Georgia Tech. Lavelle Edwards got his 244th on Thursday night. Don Nealon 191 and 
John Cooper will go to 180 here in about two and a half minutes. Our fact of the night. And uh, he's still over there coaching. Second down and 11. Here's a toss to Derek Cohn. Want to stay in bounds, and I don't think he will, though. It is a final. Florida State has survived Georgia Tech 41 to 35. Wow, what a game in the ACC that everybody expected to be for the top spot in that conference. Florida State holds serve. But what a performance by Joe Hamilton in that game. Four touchdown passes to make it more than interesting. You've got to wonder, Gary, about how maybe the rankings will shift around a little bit this week. Penn State was pushed to the limit by Pittsburgh today and won by three. A six-point win by Florida State. They probably won't move from number one, but you've got to be doubtful whether or not Georgia Tech's going to budge much from number ten either. I just think you're going to see more of the same this year that you saw before. Watch out for Nebraska. And they did put a look in on Cal today and did it with... I don't know if you want to call it two-quarterback system, but they got Couch in there as much as Newcomb, and they lit it up in about every way imaginable. We're down closing in on two minutes remaining here. And another timeout, and now the remainder of the fans here booing UCLA with a fourth down upcoming. Chevrolet most valuable players in our game tonight. Matt Stanley. And boy, did he play a great game as he came out of Bexley High School right here in Columbus. Longtime Buckeye fan ends up playing for UCLA. A walk on at a huge night. And Steve Belisari, Boca Raton High School, the second Belisari to be a star here for Ohio State. His brother Greg was a great linebacker. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And starting this year, Chevy also donates 1000 bucks to those high schools. So our congratulations. Matt, you put on a show. You had the big play to start yeah. the game. 67-yard yeah. touchdown reception. You had some huge blocks. Just going to come up short with your Bruins tonight. There was just too many Buckeyes too deep. And they're set to punt away, those Stultz, with Ricky Manning back deep. Got to wonder about the receiving core overall now for UCLA. Danny Farmer shaking up when probably shouldn't have been in there. Freddie Mitchell got hurt on a kick return. All of a sudden, all that depth at wide receiver and all that talent at wide receiver might be a little bit thinner as UCLA gets ready for their next game. You're right. You know, Brad, uh, those two guys deserved it. But also Marcus Reese, the young linebacker for UCLA, had an outstanding yes. game. Didn't finish in the money, but he had a great one, didn't he? <laughs> and you saw the two wide receivers for Ohio State, too, Rambo yep. and Germany, who lit things up tonight. And Wiley wasn't bad either. He had about 120 yards on the ground. So a lot of people we could have picked it just to seem that Belisari was the spark that lit up this Ohio State team. And Matt Stanley on the other side played as hard as he could. And there's Farmer again with that high ankle sprain. And uh, Look at that. I mean, that, that's... Uh, very, very questionable that he was in that football game late in the football game. Scott McEwen in at quarterback, so it's a three-quarterback night for UCLA. Oh, that one's almost intercepted. Well, see, Scott saw the first play and said, well, you know, maybe that's the way to get a big play. You just toss one over to the side, get a double flicker there for a touchdown. Well, we've done three games, partner, and we have seen 14 quarterbacks in college football in three weeks. He's also seen the Pac-10 take it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they take it in the shorts three times. I was going to say the chops, but any part of the body you want to pick, go ahead. Holy cow, the Pac-10 is just really, really struggling right now. They are reeling with their defense a little bit, that's for sure. Second down and 10. McEwen blitz coming, down he goes. Man. And that... That doesn't even look good. I hope he pops up. He was bent in three different directions there. I think there. you're right. I think you're right. That's a guy that really didn't, wasn't sure what he was supposed to do, if he had a hot, whether he was protected, not protected. It's a dangerous game to go in there when you're not ready to play. He got bent in a position of which you don't want to go as we take another look at Scott McEwen under a blitz. And right there, one his leg was still leg. caught underneath him. Oh boy, that's something you just, with a minute 45 left in a game that just doesn't matter, it's time to put it on the ground and yeah. head to the plane. Did you see him point to his other leg? The doctors were looking at his right leg and he goes, no, you're half right. Yeah. It's the other one. Man. 
And it definitely is the net left knee area that got caught underneath him as he was hit low from one side and then the storm came on top of him. Al Board just looking on. Offensive coordinator who had this game within reach at 21-17 before a fumble gave it back to Ohio State. They took it in for a touchdown. Same plays, different quarterback. Doesn't work as well, do it. Don't have that Cade McNown back there. That guy just made plays. Yep. And again, let's go back. This is college football. You ride a guy, what are they supposed to do? Give guys plays last year, and that's, that's good news. Him just walking off like that. Well, we hope great. so, anyway. But you got it. You know, you got to ride Cade McNown. You got a chance to win the national championship. You can't think about 99 when you have a chance to win a national championship in 98. And Joe Germain for Ohio State. Yep. Same story. And well, he's apparently all right. Pause comes back in with 142 left. Third down and 15. Pause from the shotgun. Handles the low snap, steps up and fires over the middle, incomplete. And it will be fourth down, intended for Melsby. Well, Corey Pause is known for his accuracy, but he hasn't shown it tonight. No, no, he had some of it in that first game against Boise State, as you said earlier. <laughs> Those were boys and Ohio He's State's right. men. <laughs> So another punting situation coming up. Paws only eight out of 20 tonight. Now 127 remaining in this one. Clements goes for a catch and tries to take it on the hop and will. And a penalty marker down on the return. Can't do it. Once you signal fair catch, you can't run with it. Let's go to John Saunders in New York, John. Brad, as you mentioned, Florida State holds on for the win over Georgia Tech 41 to 35, and a big win for Chris Wenke coming back from that neck injury from a year ago. Chris, congratulations. What a great win. Brad, the ball after giving a fair cut signal. And uh, that's exactly what they did. Uh, they brought that offense down here. They did a great job. Their defense uh, did what they had to do. Um, you know, we did what we had to do to win the football game tonight, and, and that's what we wanted to do. Let's go back to early. 262 yards and three touchdowns for Wanky. Brad. Actually got outplayed by the losing quarterback a little yeah. bit, but uh, great performance by both those guys in what must have been a thrilling game for Tim and Dino and Jack down there in Tallahassee. 42-20 here in the final moments as Wes Brooks, who scored a touchdown tonight, takes it out to about the 44-yard line. And there's the two quarterbacks and what they did. The Belisari was like a torch that lit this place up, including his two touchdowns and 159 yards throwing the ball. That doesn't even include the great scrambles, both on design quarterback draws and on improvising that he did out of that pocket for Ohio State tonight. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Executive producer of college football is John Filippelli. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich. Our game produced by Jay Rothman tonight. Directed by Chip Dean. Jeff Suarez, our technical director, associate producer. Margaret Schaefer, associate director, as Jerry Westbrooks takes it wide around the left side. Fred King, production manager Joe Alvarado, technical operations manager Jake Gleason, Chapman Downs and Craven Martin, our assistants to the producer, our statistician as always, PTR McGrath, our spotter Clint Deans, computer stats, Craig Rothberg handle that for us, Charles Coplin, college football today producer, our college football today directed by Calvin Haywood, college football today technical director Bob McQueen, and our New York remote coordinator Vince D'Addario. We're down to the final 23 seconds from Ohio Stadium, which is where we'll be again next week. And you got to think the Ohio Bobcats are looking out of this game tonight going, oh, are you Jerry kidding West me? Carry. <laughs> 15 seconds, that's the final play of the game. John Cooper, we showed you those five winningest active coaches 
There goes number 180 for John Cooper. And for the 21st straight year, Ohio State wins their home opener. 42-20 is the final tonight over UCLA. Don't forget, Monday night, it's the Denver Broncos starting pursuit of their three-peat. They'll take on the Miami Dolphins in the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.